Okay, I'm gonna call this meeting to order. If we could please have a moment of silence. Okay, and the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag. To the Republic which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Caliguire. I'm here. Ms. Darmo. Here. Mr. Dovey. Here. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Present. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Here. Mrs. Carmen Ugian. Mr. Litwack? Here. Mr. McLaughlin? Here. Ms. Tersich Keeley? Here. Okay. Uh, can we please have the reading of statement of adequate notice? Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. Posting on school bulletin boards and main entrance doors on June 4th, 2021. Sending a notice to the Burlington County Times and the Carrier Post on June 4th, 2021. Filing written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on June 4th, 2021, posting the notice electronically on the district website, www.delanco.com on June 4th, 2021. Thank you. Um, we will be going into executive session, session today to discuss legal and personal matters with the board solicitor. May I please have a motion? Motion by Phil. Okay, Phil and second, I'm sorry. I'll second it, Cameron. Cameron second. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. We're gonna go into executive session. We expect to be out by, what did we, was it gonna be seven? About 7 p.m., so in about an hour. So we'll be back um, for the regular aspect of the meeting at seven. So uh, you guys can either hang out or you can link back in however you wish. Um, the board members are going to log out of this meeting and go into the executive session meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, we're gonna move forward. We did um, earlier preliminary um, start of the meeting. So we will move forward into the approval of minutes of May 5th, 2021 regular and May 19th, 2021 special and executive session meetings, exhibit B. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Thank you, Bob. Second. Second. Thank you, Phil. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Accept reports of Secretary and Treasurer for April 2021, which are in agreement. Exhibit C. May I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Bob. Second by Cameron. Thank you, Cameron. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Darmo. Are you abstaining or? Uh, I'm abstaining at this time. Thank you. Motion carries. Liaison reports, Riverside High School report. I don't know if there's anybody here from Riverside to report. So we will move forward for Delanco PTO update. I don't see anybody with their hand up. DISA Recreation and Township Committee. Again, I don't see anybody with their hand up, so we're moving forward. So I'd like to welcome, every, welcome everyone to today's meeting or tonight's meeting for that matter. Um, we appreciate you joining us in the month of June on a beautiful evening. I'm gonna move this forward since there was a slight delay and I don't wanna delay the uh, festivities we'll say any longer. So Mr. Mersinger, if you would please move forward with student recognition. All right, thank you, Mrs. Kamenugi and I appreciate it and as we say, this is the best part of the night when we get a chance to recognize our students for doing fantastic things. So um, every month, what we do is uh, we select different students from both schools that uh, are showing certain attributes. Now it's, it's being done a little differently this year. So at Walnut, there are actually different categories like the writer of the month or most conscientious or 
things like that. And then at Pearson, it's, it's a little more general. Uh, these are students that are doing well, they're staying focused, they're working hard, they're well-behaved and respectful, uh, all during uh, the, one of the most tremendously challenging school years any of us have ever seen. And so it's just great that these students are staying on target, continuing to do their best. So without further ado, I will start with the Walnut Street Middle School students that are being recognized. And these students, uh, if they haven't received their certificates yet, they will receive their certificates from the principals. Uh, we, we can send them out through the mail, or sometimes we have parents come pick them up at the offices. So here we are for Walnut Street Middle School. We've got a few writers of the month that are doing a fantastic job in writing. Uh, and again, this is for the month of May. Uh, this, this month, uh, we have Michaela Petrosky, Christopher Easton, Yanni Sejas, and Michael O'Malley. So let's give a big round of applause to those four students for being the writers of the month. All right, most conscientious. We've got a student that I remember from being in Mansfield with me when I was a principal there, and that is a young man named Derek Smyers. Congratulations to Derek for being the most conscientious. Next, uh, we have Greatest Perseverance, and that is a student, I believe I saw him and his family on there, that student is Franco Tapia. Congratulations, Franco, you did a great job with that. Next, we have the Walnut Whiz Kid, and this is a student that is well-rounded and doing great things just in general at Walnut, and that is Janiah Harris. Janiah Harris, well done, Janiah. Next, Advisory All-Stars. You went quiet, Joe. Joe, you're on mute. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what just happened. I just got muted by accident, I think, by somebody. <laughs> Thanks, Albert. What is this, a practical joke? All right, anyway, sorry about that. Uh, moving on, sorry, Advisory All-Star. So the advisory program is uh, something that happens at Walnut where the students talk about emotions, they talk about social situations. It's actually part of the social and emotional learning uh, program that we've had in place for a couple of years now. And so the Advisory All-Star for May was Sarah Taylor. Congratulations to Sarah. Next, moving on, we have the Walnut Scientist of the Month, and that is Sarah Ospino. Sarah, congratulations. Next, we have the Walnut Musician of the Month, and that is Kaylin Walter. Congratulations to Kaylin. Next, uh, moving on, the most dedicated student. And uh, so that, that is um, the student being recognized for being the most dedicated is John Salerno. Well done, John. And last but certainly not least, we have a student that's being recognized for perfect participation. I think one of our board members will recognize this student, and that is Katie Caliguire. Give a big round of applause to Katie Caliguire for perfect participation. So that's that an ice cream thing for Girl Scouts. Otherwise, she'd be here. Just to... All right. <laughs> no ice matter... cream one. I'm sorry. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm sure it's a proud dad moment no matter what. It, it is. It's thank you. Plus, she's at Girl Scouts. I mean, that that's that's a great organization too. I'm sure she's doing fantastic in that as well. So thank congratulations. You. Next, we can move on to. M. Joan Pearson Elementary School, where we're going, again, uh, students are selected for being very well-rounded when it comes to respect, academics, doing all sorts of things during a very challenging year. And let's start with kindergarten, Mrs. Arangio's class. The student selected is Joao de Oliveira. Joao, congratulations. Next, we have kindergarten, Mrs. Crozier. The student selected is William Archer. Well done, William. Next, we have Miss uh, Miss Smith's first grade class, and the student selected is Spencer Guest. Congratulations to Spencer. Next, first grade, we have Mrs. Weller's class. The student selected is Kaylin Perez. Kaylin Perez, congratulations, Kaylin. Second grade now, we have Miss Lipinski's class, and the student selected is Mason Niedermeyer. Well done, Mason. And now we have Mrs. McCann's second grade class, and that student is 
Haley Shellhaas. Well done, Haley, congratulations. Moving on to third grade. And in third grade, we have Mrs. Barbara and Mr. Costelli. They have a class that was shared because Mr. Costelli uh, was the long-term substitute. The student selected is Noel Fontaine. Congratulations to Noel. Next, Mrs. Fitzwater. And the student selected is Milania Manzano. Congratulations to Milania. Fourth grade, we have Mr. Stockton's class and the student selected is Isabella Tusillo. Isabella, congratulations, well done. Fourth grade, Miss, Miss Wallace's class, the student selected is Marissa Seit. Marissa Seit, congratulations to Marissa. Moving on to fifth grade, uh, we have uh, Miss, Miss Brend Mrs. Brendel and uh, Miss Letton's class. And again, that's kind of a combined teacher there because Mrs. Uh, Miss Letton came in and was a long-term substitute. The student selected is Aiden Force. Congratulations to Aiden. I see him right there on the screen. Well done, Aiden. And last but certainly not least, we have a student from Mrs. Guckin's fifth grade class, and that is Courtney Arnold. Congratulations to Courtney Arnold. And so for the good of the board and for the good of the public that are here, once again, congratulations to all these students. But what I like to say is thank you to their teachers. Thank you to their families. Thank you to everyone that's been part of what they're doing in their lives, whether it's education or not, because you have helped them to get to this point of being recognized for this. So thank you to the families and to their, their teachers and everyone around them. So, um, so Mrs. Karamanugian, that, that's all I have for student recognition. Thank you. Awesome. Congratulations, everyone. If you would like to stay on, awesome. If you'd like to drop off, that's perfectly fine as well. We're going to continue on with our agenda at this point in time. I'm going to open the agenda and the meeting up for public comment on agenda items. Okay, I don't see anybody with their hand up. So I will close public comment and we'll move forward with the superintendent's report, Mr. Mersinger. You're on mute. Thank All you. right, Ms. Cameron again, thank you. Got you. You've got to let me, you know, get get the cursor to the spot. <laughs> <I know. laughs> get, get that little box that says <laughs> unmute. All right. So, all right. Oh, cursor. Right. Right. We're on mute, and we are moving on to the superintendent's report. And so, a motion is requested to approve the following items, A through G. And uh, I have no comments at this time, but I'll provide uh, comments during the comments and questions portion. A through G. A motion is requested. Motion by Phil. Second. Thank you. Questions or comments? Uh, Ms. Vera Dorma with a comment. Mm -hmm. sure. I'm very happy to see um, students going back full time for September. As a teacher, um, we had our students in my district back full time and the kids were just so happy and energized. I just wanna make that comment. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Darmo. I appreciate that. And also, I, I wanted to comment on the safe return plan. So what I did was I, I did provide an online comment form uh, for the safe return plan. Uh, I have reviewed all of those responses and I shared them with the board. Uh, some responses were saying, this is great. I fully support it. And then other responses uh, focused primarily on the topic of masks and whether masks should or should not be required. So just wanted to give a little insight to everyone about that is that right now uh, we have the governor uh, more recently making some announcements about masks and what we in the education world are, are expecting and hoping for over the next couple of weeks is not just an announcement, but an executive order or some other kind of official guidance from the Department of Ed to say that masks will be optional for the 21-22 school year. That's something that we're anticipating some, something that we have right now. So under the federal requirements and under the state requirements, because it all trickles down to us, uh, we are required to have a safe return plan that includes language about the proper wearing of masks and, and the, the requirement of wearing masks. However, that requirement again could absolutely change tomorrow, next week, or sometime over the next couple of weeks. 
But no matter what, I just want everyone's minds to be at ease that in the coming months, I do expect the plan to be revised, especially when it comes to masks, possibly when it comes to distancing uh, and, and in various other areas, depending on the guidance that we receive. And let's remember that the plan for, for the, this past school year went through nine different versions. So if we look back to that first version, it was a good plan, but it still didn't have all the guidance that was going to come later. So we went through nine different versions. For next year, I'm hoping to not go through nine different versions of the plan, but I do expect the safe return plan to be revised a, a, a few times. And in fact, I put the disclaimer in there over and over again, that if we receive new guidance from the state about any of the topics in the plan, uh, we will certainly take steps to revise that. So, um, so I just want to give that preamble to the plan and just let you know that more guidance will be coming and that I fully anticipate revising it. At the same time, we do need to approve a plan and have it submitted to the state by tomorrow I don't, I because it, it runs alongside our ARP funding. So just, just a little preamble there. Okay. Well, let's put this out there. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kamenuga. You're welcome. Instruction and Program Committee, there is no report. We're going to move this forward with the Finance Committee report. Mr. Litwack. Thank you. And uh, I have a printout so I can read it Excellent. tonight. And I appreciate your helpfulness in the last two or three, at least, mm -hmm. board meetings. <laughs> it's the Finance Committee report. The Finance Committee did not meet, but this is the report on the school finances. The committee chairperson makes a motion to approve the following. A, necessary line item transfers for April 2021, Exhibit J. B, monthly line account certification for April 2021. C, payment of bills in the amount of $1,530,367.26, Exhibit K, pursuant to PL 2015, Chapter 47, the Delanco Board of Education intends to renew award or permit to expire contracts previously awarded by the Board of Education per the attached list. These contracts have been and will continue to be in full compliance with all state, federal, statutes and regulations, in particular, New Jersey Title 18A, 18 dot, et cetera, seek. NJAC Chapter 23 and Federal Uniform Administrative Requirements 2 CFR Part 200 Exhibit L. E, authorization for the business administrator to process additional invoices for payment during the current fiscal year with board confirmation at the next regular meeting. F, extraordinary unspecifiable services. EUS, contract with Delta Dental for the purpose of providing dental coverage to the Lanco Board of Education employees from the period July 1, 2021 to June 30th, 2022 at a cost not to exceed $80,000. Nursing services contract with preferred home health care and nursing services to serve as a one-to-one -one nurse for one student from July 1, 2021 to June 30th, 2022 at an hourly rate of $60 for an RN and $55 for an LPN. Resolution directing the distribution of the Lanco Township Board of Education net return surplus funds held in request by the Burlington County Insurance Pool Joint Insurance Fund, that's Exhibit M. 2021, this is I, rates as follows, kindergarten $15,253, grades one to five, $14,563, grades six to eight, $13,766. J, resolution authorizing approving renewal of interlocal service agreement for the shared information technology services with Morristown uh, Board of Ed for the 
school year at an annual rate of $132,651 per attached contract. Exhibit N. K, resolution to transfer up to $250,000 of 2020-2021 surplus to capital reserve, whereas NJSA 18A 21-2, NJSA 18A 7G-31, and NJSA 18A 7F-41 permit a board of education to establish and or deposit into certain reserve accounts at year end. And whereas the aforementioned statute authorized procedures under the authority of the commissioner of education, which permit a board of education to transfer unanticipated excess current revenues of unexpended appropriations into reserve accounts during the month of June by board resolution and whereas the Delanco Township Board of Education wishes to transfer unanticipated excess current year revenues or unexpected appropriations from the general fund into a capital reserve account at year end. And whereas the Delanco Township Board of Education has determined that an amount not to exceed $250,000 is available for such purpose of transfer. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Delanco Township Board of Education that it hereby authorizes the district's school business administrator to make this transfer consistent with all applicable laws and regulations. L, addendum to FSMC contract with NutriServe to approve an increase of 2.5% on management fee as supported by the current index rate in effect on April 30th, 2021 with a break-even guarantee included exhibit O. M, child nutrition program lunch prices for both schools for the 2021-22 uh, school year exhibit P. N, special education tuition contract for the 2021 school year with Burlington County Special Services School District for one student effective March 16th, 2021 through June 21st, 2021 at the annual rate of $15,593 prorated. Oh, special education tuition contract for the 2021-2022 school year with Burlington County Special Services School District for a one-to-one -one assistant for one student at an annual rate not to exceed $42,000. P, special education tuition contract for the 20, uh, 20, 20, 21 school year with Beverly City Board of Education for one-to-one -one aid plus extraordinary services for one student in the pre-K program for the period 3, 29, 21 to 6, 30, 21 at a cost not to exceed $12,000. Q, cancellation of outstanding checks, and that's exhibit Q. R, NutriServe monthly report for April 2021, Exhibit R and S, ratification of bills paid in the amount of $13,929.89, and that's in checks numbers 2201 through 2204, and that's Exhibit S. And I um, make a motion to approve what I've just presented. Who seconds that? Second. Thank you, Bob. Questions or comments? Um, Steve here. I just have a just a question about uh, just for clarification. Um, can someone just talk a little bit about this? The option of of moving money into capital reserve. Uh, I mean, we did have a budget shortfall this year. I'm not sure how how much of a surplus exactly we have, but what would be the advantage of moving? money into the capital reserve fund and is that something we're really planning to do or is this more like a, just leaving the option open so um this actually has to be a board resolution if you don't have a resolution then you cannot move any funds into a reserve so if you do have surplus at the end of the year this allows you to move that into there um and you kind of want to build up your reserves if you can in case you have a large project down the road that you know, a boiler blows in the middle of the year or something that you didn't budget for. Um, I have a question to follow up on that. 
if that money, if that surplus is not moved into the capital reserve, then what can that money be used for? The instructional program, hiring teachers, or? It, it goes into next year's budget. So for anything we need it for. What is our well, current? It'll offset taxes. What is our current, um, what is the amount in the capital reserve at this moment? I don't have that information in front of me. Okay. That's it. So just so the board is aware, this is an annual approval that we, and actually we have questions about it each year simply because it's allowing the possibility of doing something, but it's not saying that we absolutely will do it. It's not requiring us to do it, just allows the possibility. Uh, so, and that's what, it's just an annual thing that business administrators would put on an agenda just to make sure that it's possible. But I mean, Vicki, in your estimation, you know, is, is there is there a possibility of us even utilizing funds in that way? At the end of this year, probably not not much, if any. Yeah. And I mean, the board is aware of how challenging the budget has been. So it's just highly unlikely that we would do it, but it at least allows for the possibility. Vera, is that clear to you? Um, yeah, I think that... Um... If that money is not put in the capital reserve fund, it can be used for other things and also to offset taxes. So that was something I wasn't even thinking of and I'm glad I have that information now. Thank you. Yeah, and that's why all the, if you, everything I read, you realize that these are laws that exist in the state of New Jersey that whoever the BA is just following and it makes sense for us to have that option. That's all it's creating an option for us. And who knows what there's, you know, budget information today that came out and, and that will affect hopefully special education increases. The more that's in, the more that we can access if need be is, is to our benefit. Thank you. Uh, I just, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I just have one more quick, quick small question. Um, and this is, uh, I'm referencing Exhibit L, which is a list of uh, renewals of contracts. And so I just, this is just a small thing I noticed, uh, which is that the educational, so there are two lines. Um, uh, these are the, uh, the basically the total amounts of various contracts. There are two lines for educational services unit of Burlington County, uh, which I believe is a special ed, um, uh, school. Uh, there's one for CST services, uh, which, is 205,000, and then there's one for transportation, which is 275,000. So it just was surprising to me that transportation was more than the, the tuition cost, if that's if I'm reading that correctly. Um, it, it why, does. basically, yeah, not to put anybody in the spot, but why is the transportation so expensive compared to the, the other services we're getting from this? I could also take an answer off, offline after the meeting. Um, but it's transportation well, just, costs are very high. And Stephen, which which item were you referencing? Sure. So yeah. So it's Exhibit L. It's uh, page fifty four of the public packet. Um, it was. It just, is it in the what we just? Is it in what we're just talking about, Stephen? The finance yes. committee report. Yes, which, it is. Which, it's in the, it's the yeah, report. So, so you're referring to the cost of the CST, which is a certain amount. Yes. And that's actually not tuition. That's that's CST services being provided by ESU staff members. But when it comes to transportation, uh, one thing that the board has noticed over the past few years with budgeting is that transportation costs are incredibly high. Um, and, and this is especially true if we have out of district students uh, that require transportation uh, to uh, all sorts of different locations. And so, you know, that's that's the kind of thing where uh, we actually look at that. So if we were to bring students back in the district, which as the board knows, we are working on that or, or keep students in district, uh, that actually doesn't just save on tuition, but saves on all sorts of other costs, including transportation. So, but yeah, I, I agree with you. The transportation costs are very high, but I really have no explanation for why, except that when, when we're paying for children to go out of district, we also pay to transport them. Part of the reason too, is when they um, are 
uh, receive an IEP in the middle of the year that they have to go out of district, they're not in the pool in the beginning of the year with, when all the districts come together to do their transportation. So then you have to get an individual route for a student and that's a lot higher. I see, okay. Okay, um, thank you very much, appreciate it. Um, so no, if, I, if I may, um, can you give us, I, you went over that role with the Capital Reserve, just what I'm wondering, maybe you, you went into this one, it says up to 250,000. So what is, do we know the exact amount if you said that already? And then okay, why couldn't we, re, like, are we going to be able to repurpose that into what we need in the fall? I mean, with everything that we cut from now, can it be easily utilized once it's put in capital reserve? Is that the way it usually is, or would well, it be? You won't know the amount of of any surplus until your your year is closed out. So up to so we okay. I, I just so you can go up to two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, that's into right. that. Okay, thank you. The, a lot of these are just process issues that if we don't do it's silly not to because it'll affect us in a way we don't want to be affected. And there, there's, you know, it's, it's uh, the transportation costs have risen dramatically. I started my career in education, my senior year at Drew University, getting up at six in the morning and driving special ed students in a Volkswagen van to picking them up at their homes, driving them to schools. Some were special ed, some were for high end girls prep schools. And certainly the costs have gone up since then. For sure. You know, and between labor, they can't find drivers. Between testing that has to be done by them where they can't be certified, by fuel costs, maintenance costs, it's the cost of doing business. And it's affecting not just us, it affects everyone. And once again, scale. Thank you. And what is controllable and what isn't. Thank you. Okay, um, let's put this out for vote. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote in favor of certain items. Should I say them now or wait till the end? Let's wait till the end. Okay. Um, second. Oh, sorry, all in favor. I'm sorry, opposed. I'm sorry. <laughs> Call me <off> guard. <laughs> Um, abstain. Um, I'm going to allow Vera to go and then I'm going to go with one as well. So Vera, you may speak first. Okay. I'm in favor of letters F, G, H, I, M, N, O, P, Q, R. I vote no on letters A through E, J, K, L, S. Okay. Did you get that, Vicki? You're on mute. So, throughout, what's the last letter that you said? For no, for the no vote? Yes. The letter S, as in snake. Thank you. Okay, and I am in approval of all line items except for letter C, exhibit K, specific to the vendor bill list, number 1216 only. That is what I'm abstaining to at this point in time. The rest I approve and, and, and am in agreement with. Okay, other than that, the motion carries. We will move forward with the Operations and Facilities Com Committee report. Mr. Caliguire. Thank you, Ms. One moment. All right, for the month of May, uh, routine maintenance activities as uh, schools are in hybrid sessions uh, due to coronavirus. Um, area was mowed and uh, weed whacked. Both schools maintained ground, school grounds, completed work orders as needed. Uh, special project activities replaced rooftop fan motor from A7 at Pearson, replaced 10 door handles at Pearson with new intruder handles. That's great. Fire inspection completed required repairs uh, and they replaced pump two on the boiler at Pearson, the old pump was uh, leaking and failing. That's all I have. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Policy committee report, Ms. Darmo. Um, there's no report, but I would like to um, make a comment or ask a question, if I could at this time very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the parents and the students are the ones who feel the effects of our policies most directly. 
So I would like to have an open door policy where any student or parent could um, email the superintendent um, any policy that they would want discussed and then he could hand that over to the policy committee because there might be some issues I'm not aware of that, that they would wanna um, have discussed. Is that favorable to the board? I think it's this something isn't we need to discuss. This is the bring that up. Right, we need to discuss that in our committee as a whole, when we, or however we go to discuss this, and then we bring it to the board as from the committee's point of view as a recommendation, and then it's voted in that respect. So I think we should probably, that's a great point. I think it's something we can discuss in the future. Um, we just can't discuss it at this point in time. Okay, very good. Awesome, thank you. Personnel committee report, Mr. C. Jenkins. Thank you, Marissa. I would like to make the motion to approve the following, A through AA with special significance given to K, the acceptance of Joanne Can's letter of retirement as music teacher, effective July 1st, 2021. Mrs. Can has served the district for approximately 25 years. L, the acceptance of Nancy Fox's letter of retirement as secretary to the superintendent, effective July 21st, 2021. Ms. Fox has served the district for approximately 24 years. M, the acceptance of Jacqueline Deluzio's letter of retirement as substitute caller, effective July 1st, 2021. Mrs. Deluzio has served the district for approximately 37 years. And the acceptance of Mackenzie Morrow's letter of resignation as part-time art teacher, effective July 1st, 2021 are the hiring of Stephen Burns as, part, as the part-time 0.6 FTE school business administrator with a contract for 2021-2022 and an annual salary of $75,000 with a start date of July 1st, 2021. Z, the ratification of contract between the Delanco Township Education Association and the Delanco Township Board of Education for the contract period of July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2023, Exhibit Z, and AA, the acceptance of Lou Conti's letter of resignation as M. Joan Pearson principal, effective July 16th, 2021. I will make the motion. Thank you. I will second, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Uh, questions or comments? I'll make the first set of comments. I'd like to personally thank Mrs. Can for her 25 years of service to the district as and as the only person on the board who actually had Mrs. Can oh, I yay. personally <laughs> thank her for uh, teaching me through K through A in the music department. Thank you, Cameron. All right, I'd like to make a couple comments too. Uh, Joanne, thank you very much for your service. We appreciate it tremendously. To uh, Jackie Deluzio, thank you very much for all the years. 37, you got a big one there. Um, <laughs> Mackenzie DeMauro, thank you. Nancy Fox, thank you very much. Uh, did I cover everybody? And welcome aboard to, oh yeah, Lou, definitely we're going to miss Lou. Um, welcome aboard to Mr. Burns, you know, you join the uh, nut house here, you know. And I'm very glad to see that we actually have a contract with the DTA, you know, nice and we can get rolling and moving forward on that. And I just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, Vera, with some quick comments, I was so happy to see Mrs. Kian at the eighth grade graduation and, and tell her how many great memories we have from my daughters um, being in concerts and assemblies with her. Um, Mrs. Fox, I've interacted with her and I'll be so, so sorry to see her, her go. My daughter, Christina, was a sub um, for the Delanco School District, and she mentioned Jackie to me as well. And of course, uh, Mr. Conti, that's going to be a big loss. So those are my comments. Thank you. If I, if I may, um, mm -hmm. I just want to say uh, Mr. Conti's been um, such a special person to have here for, for my kids as well. And I know, you know the whole town's going to miss him dearly and it'd be a hard man to replace. And also, I'm very happy for the teachers you have you know, settlement there um, and they deserve everything they get. I want, you know, they've, they've done so well for, for my kids and what they work with. I think it's, it's fantastic that that's going to be settled. And I appreciate them letting us have evening meetings again um, for parent teacher stuff. That's a, uh, that's going to be great. I'm looking forward to, you know, having that. It's going to help the parents out. So um, no, I'm glad we could come to that. And uh, yeah, just a thank you to Mr. Khan. We appreciate his service. Thank you. 
and I want to wish everyone the best of luck moving forward in all their new endeavors and new journeys. And I would like to congratulate Mr. Stephen Burns in joining our team as well. Thanks. Well, best wishes to everyone. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Uh, Mar Marissa, Marissa, Thank if you I may Kent. talk Sorry. about a few you team may. members. You may. So first, Joanne, I'll start with you. Uh, as I said in the, the message that I sent you, you are a music maker and a dreamer of dreams. And uh, what you've done for 25 years is create more music makers and dreamers of dreams in Delanco. And it's, um, it's just unbelievable to me, the impact that you have had over your time here in Delanco. And I wanna say thank you for that. That, you know, as someone who was in a music program as a child and as a teenager, I appreciate everything that you do uh, for our students when it comes to music. So thank you every, for everything. Uh, for the years that I was here, as well as the years long before me. Um, also, uh, Nancy Fox. Uh, Nancy, you have been the right-hand person for me for seven years. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get choked up and emotional, but I will miss you dearly. You're an amazing person. And I, you know, that we can find somebody to sit at the desk, and we have, and you know who that is, and a great person. But to replace you uh, is a, a different thing entirely. So I, I appreciate everything you've done over the years as well. Uh, moving down to uh, Mackenzie, who, Mackenzie, you've been with us for a couple of years. You are a true artist at heart. And again, the district will miss you. Uh, and we, we wish you the best as you move on to another part of your journey. And um, also, Jackie Deluzio. 37 years, it's, it's also unbelievable the impact you've had. So thank you very much for everything you've done. Again, it's gonna be very difficult to fill your shoes uh, with being the substitute caller. Uh, and, and we will certainly miss everything you've done. And uh, last but not least, when it comes to those that are leaving, uh, Lou Conti, you are the ultimate warrior. You are the all-star of Delanco. And um, it, it is, a sad day to see you go. And as I've said in the recent weeks, as we've discussed this, I, I don't want to see you go, but I would never hold you back in any way, shape or form. And I, I totally appreciate that you're on a journey and on a path. And I absolutely wish you the best and we will stay in touch and we will have that partnership and that collaboration with you in your new position. So Lou, a hundred percent, just a class act, amazing person. And we, we appreciate everything you've done at Pearson for years. And uh, again, like, like a few have said, uh, let's, let's all welcome Stephen Burns as the new team member. We've already talked about Vicki leaving. Uh, that was announced previously. Uh, but again, Stephen, welcome to the team. And uh, we appreciate that, that you're joining us. That's all I have, Marissa. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Greatly appreciated. This would now go to a roll call vote, please. Mr. Caliguire. Vote yes. yes. Ms. Darmo. I vote yes. Mr. Dovey. Yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Yes. Mrs. Karen Ugian. Yes. Mr. Litwack. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Ms. Tersich Keeley. Yes. Motion carries. Catherine, you have your hand up. Was there something you wanted to say? Uh, no, I was just resting on my hand. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was um, the little blue thing on your screen. No, that's fine. Um, I don't even know how to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> And to be quite honest, I don't even, I don't, maybe I removed it. I don't even know. <laughs> so we'll see. All right. Board lays on reports. Riverside update. Mr. C. Jenkins. Thank you, Marissa. While I was unable to attend uh, Riverside's meeting two weeks ago because I was feeling under the weather, uh, their agenda indicated to me that they did mostly routine June matters like we just got done uh, going through with personnel and finance. Uh, the only thing that stuck out on personnel was that Riverside did hire uh, Amanda Smith as a, where did it go? 
as a uh, school pre-K teacher. So congratulations to Amanda. She is going to a another very good district. So we're happy to see that. Last Thursday was Riverside's high school graduation. Uh, myself and Mr. Jenkins both attended and wait, did he attend? Yeah, I think he attended. Um, and it was a uh, it was a very nice affair, and I have the data for that for everyone. There were 20 students going to attend a four-year college. There were 35 students going to attend a two-year college. There were five students going to attend a trade school, six students going directly into the military, 23 students going directly into the workforce, two students who were taking a gap year for a total of 91 graduating seniors, with a total scholarship awarded in the amount of $362,000. Oh, that is all that I have. How many, how many of those were Delanco students, Cameron? You know? Unfortunately, Robin didn't break down the, that specific data in my email from her, but if I had to guesstimate, I'd say a good 20. So I'd say, what's that? Roughly a, a little over a fifth of the graduating class were Delanco students. And I believe a number of them, maybe four or five were in the top 10 graduating students. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, NJB, excuse me, NJSBA and BCSBA, Mr. Litwack. Yeah, there's been a few meetings between our last meeting. Um, the, I don't know if I mentioned to you, I, I was trying to look, the last day I was trying to look when our last board meeting was the date, um, because I have a note from 510, it was about um, presentation. This is at the county, they call it the CAL, um, bi-weekly. Every two weeks we have committee meetings where, via Zoom, where issues and Everyone around the state, uh, county representatives are part of this. And it was about, um, it was presented by a Dr. Burt Mandelbaum, and it was about the mental health issues and about looking at uh, sleep and of uh, schools and when they should be starting. And that the data that's been gathered says we should be starting 45 minutes later than we do. Um, on 520, there was a countywide meeting. I don't know if anyone else, was anyone else attending that via Zoom? But Ray Marini, the county superintendent, and he had been a former uh, superintendent in Maple Shade. He um, introduced himself and um, he basically was telling all the listeners from the various districts at the COVID care funds and the S2 and the SR3 funds, um, federal funding was coming and we see that. And then that there was um, May 24th, that there was executive order 175. That was that at that point it was about gyms outside, et cetera. So that's been changing and that will continue to change. Um, that there's board certification that are, for example, this is something we talk about board uh, communications and boards working together. Our neighboring districts of Edgewater Park and uh, Palmyra, both of those have, they reached, they did professional development where they are a master board they met, they organized, they did what was the training as a group. And in doing so, yeah, they get a master board certification. It's not the certification, it's the knowledge and the ability to work together that is forged from that. So there's that was at a county level. And, and I wanna also mention that I think I have a note here at June 8th, 9th, 10th, that the start of assessments, that's old news by now. And 524, it was about um, 
how each district basically has to deal with how they're dealing with field trips, daily overnight, senior trips, et cetera, uh, fundraising issues, that special ed is still a problematic area. Also recruitment of teachers and how that is going to be done. There's money going to be going into that uh, to better be able to recruit teachers, minority teachers. Uh, it's a changing world. And um, there's the same thing about high needs area like ESL and that they're gonna have more flexibility. There's shortages of teachers. Um, then student, they're going to do student teaching internships. They'll be offering uh, through Rutgers and Montclair recruiting uh, to create pipelines for retention. They're going to have year long residencies, induction programs at collaborative colleges, computer support. Um, it's the idea of they're going to have 18 month grants to try and get get uh, students and get racial training in and and then I think as we all know June 4th no longer was a health emergency so now things are still being dealt with but a little differently and the the Cal itself we I think uh, next Monday I have a meeting and then the next one after that will be um, a hybrid meeting. They're going to try doing, and this is something that may be important to see how that works statewide for boards to be able to have a hybrid meeting in person and virtual. So we'll see how that works out. And the um, last thing here. Well, maybe that's it. No longer. I guess that may be a good place to end it. No more public emergency. Excellent. So, All right. Well, thank you, Harry. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Township Committee, Mrs. Tertius Killey. Hey, uh, so there were two meetings since we last met, one on 614 and one on 621. Uh, just a couple of salient points from each. Um, on 614, the Township Committee voted no to approve uh, any cannabis business uses in Delanco. Um, they voted yes to a $700,000 bond. And there was also a presentation from the Joint Insurance Fund representative, which I thought was interesting and is recorded if anybody wants to review on the board. Um, and on 621, they decided to form a committee um, of both various board members um, and members of the public to look into what bringing um, potential cannabis businesses into Delanco might look like. Um, and so they're looking for volunteers from the community, from the public and from various boards. They didn't originally include the Board of Ed on it, but I requested that they reach out to you, Marissa, um, to see if we could get a volunteer from our board since those tax dollars do affect our schools. Um, so be on the lookout for an email or for email from Mike uh, Templeton for that. And I also informed the township committee um, that we would have a new BA starting on July 1st um, and that hopefully we could use that, um, that particular change just as a catalyst to jumpstart our relationship with the township committee um, and that he would hopefully be reaching out to them soon. But I didn't, uh, I didn't really share his contact information because I wasn't sure how public it was. So they're looking for that information from us um, as soon as we can get it to them. Okay, thank you. Uh, I do um, have a question for Catherine. Oh, sure that bond you mentioned? Uh, they voted yes on a $700,000 bond. Just uh, there's a whole list of, of things that went into it, um, how they're going to spend their money for the upcoming year. And, and sorry, go ahead. Is that a member their money for tax, you know, like taxpayer dollars are going toward that bond yeah. for certain items, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's probably a capital uh, improvements street. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a large portion for sidewalks. They're finally replacing the terrible sidewalks along the AA field. Um, there's a whole long list. It was mostly capital improvement things. So. Understood. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Um, I also attended, this is not related to the township committee, but I did want to bring it up. I attended um, a community engagement forum uh, and I actually Mr. Mersinger was there as well that the NJSBA held. Uh, gosh, when was that Joe? <laughs> oh, you're muted. June 3rd, I think. June 3rd, okay, gosh. Or, yeah, um, I think it's Thursday, June 3rd. Yeah, uh, I took some notes, which I sent to Marissa to send out to the board, which I knew that she sent out to everybody. I highly recommend everybody look through it. It was, there was some very basic information about how to talk to people so they want to listen to you. Um, but, you know, uh, times being what they are, I thought it was helpful information to review. Um, really, I thought the most interesting part of it was the information on using social media as a board. Um, I know that's something that we don't do currently, um, and that makes sense because we don't have any policies around it and we don't have any way to do it right now. Um, but the NJSBA did actually uh, encourage school boards to put some policies in place and start using social media as a way to um, improve public relations. I know um, we have uh, a lot of opportunities in that particular aspect. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting is that you can accept volunteers to run social media for you. Um, I know Joe does, uh, you do Twitter. I think the school does Twitter. I don't know if you do Twitter personally, Joe. Yeah, um, I, have, I have Twitter, but typically what I'm doing is retweeting things from teachers, principals, uh, sometimes parents, you know, depending on, and then sometimes I'll do original tweets as well. Yeah, originally crafted tweets. Um, yeah. yeah, so they said you, you can pay somebody to do this. You can ha have um, a staff member who is knowledgeable about this run it. Um, or you can have a, a volunteer from as a member of the public run it for you, um, but that it's uh, a great way, obviously, to build credibility, um, to publicize helpful information, share facts um, about what's going on with the school, um, and actually really helpful in the instance like a, um, uh, a pandemic across the world, where if you already have something like this set up, you have a way to reach people where they are, which is social media these days. So I, I encourage everybody to read through the notes um, that I, I think Marissa sent mm -hmm. out a couple of weeks ago. It was very helpful. You got it. Thank you. Very helpful. Old business. We have Committee of the Whole, discussion of survey and the next steps. So Marissa, before we get to that, could I share one other item of old business that's not on there? You may. Thank you. We were thanking staff members for their service and, and wishing them farewell. I just wanted to take a moment to do the same for three staff members who are not on the agenda, and they were not technically on the agenda last time either, but they were impacted by the reduction in force, and uh, staff members have made the choice to move forward again on a journey in another direction in another district. So I, I wanted to take a moment to thank Mike Cobrin, who uh, currently, you know, he was he was impacted by the RIF, the reduction in force, and Mike worked with us for about a year. Uh, and, you know, Mike, we appreciate you very much and, and we wish you the best. Uh, but still, you know, as I've said, staff members can be recalled if our budget changes, if we have more funding, and we know that we do have federal funding coming. Uh, but I also want to say thank you to Maureen O'Malley, who has been with us for a couple of years, but also uh, has been working with us in many different capacities for beyond the past two years. And Maureen, you're an amazing person, an amazing teacher. I do wish you the best in your new setting uh, as, as you move forward with that. And last but not least is Amanda Smith, who has been with our district for seven years and is moving on in another position elsewhere. And Amanda, you, um, you, you have had a tremendous impact here on the students and staff members. And uh, I, I really truly wish you the best and know that you're going to continue to be fantastic in your new setting. So I just wanted to take a moment to thank those individuals as well, because they're not technically on the agenda as resigning or retiring. So thank you. Thank you. We need to thank all of our professionals um, and everyone who works in the district, for the district. Um, they're doing the best they can. And for pe people who have been here 37 years and 24 years or two years, those are the people that show up every day and do the work. So thank you. Uh, some of them I know I personally, you know, address, but for all of the folks that are listening, thanks. Thanks for what you do day in, day out. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Committee of the whole back to old business. In addition to what I, we were talking about earlier, committee of the whole discussion of the survey and the next steps. 
So we had a survey go out to each board member to ask some information, um, whether or not, uh, I think they were, some of the topics were the BEO, OE is considering a change to the committee structure. Please indicate any structures below that you'd be in favor of. If we were to transition to a committee of the whole structure, what do you believe the timeline should be? Describe your thoughts in keeping the current arrangement of smaller committees. Describe your thoughts on transitioning to the committee of the whole. And lastly, use the space below to share any other thoughts about this topic or related topics that not, weren't necessarily asked previously. And uh, I will say that it was a favorable uh, survey in the direction of moving towards a committee of the whole or something similar to that. Uh, we had three individuals that were strongly uh, in favor of switching to the committee of the whole. We had three board members who were interested in a hybrid of committee of the whole. And we had two board members that were um, interested in maintaining what we had currently. Um, so it certainly seems as though we're going to be moving in the direction that's a little different than where we are now. And um, which is great. I think it's a great opportunity for us to start discussions and to have more transparency across the board for all committees, you know, we can all be involved. We can all have a comment or input um, and an opinion in regards to what is being discussed. So I think that's super helpful. Um, it looked as though many were interested in moving in this direction as quickly as possible. The preference was July for the majority, I will say that. Um, obviously those that were not interested in this direction opposed moving so quickly and opposed moving at all, which makes total sense because it aligns with their original decision. Um, I will say that uh, those that were opposed were just concerned about the time that would have to be put in. Um, it, and it could end up being more of a, a time that we spend together, but at the same time, I think once we streamline it, and can figure out exactly how we hope to, to run it. I think that it will eventually run more smoothly. The first meeting or so may be a little bit longer than perhaps we would prefer, but I do think that as we move forward, we'll find that we can handle this and move it along nicely. Um, if we maintain, the general jest was if we maintain the smaller committees and did not advance to the committee of the whole, it would not increase the transparency transparency, um, the meetings again, adversely would be too long, but there are many that feel as though they have the time to devote to the committee of the whole and speaking with one another and that um, they feel like it's a great idea. There were also some that were concerned, um, those that favored the more hybrid model were concerned about personnel discussions and how those would be handled. And if those would be something we could handle in more of a executive session aspect, or you know, they wanted more discussion in regards to how they would be handled. So there's certainly a lot of favorable direction on this matter in regards to let's move in this, we need, we need to move forward with this. Um, but of course, you know, we would need to vote on that as a board. And I think that that's the right thing to do so that we all have you know, proper input and it's put on the record as to how we prefer to move forward. And then of course, you can make comment as well. Um, I just wanted to give a very high level quick summary of what was found. If anybody wants to make comment now um, specific to their viewpoint or just in general, it's greatly um, appreciated at this time. Well, I, I personally, as long as I've been on the board, um, it felt that our system that existed of committees um, isn't appropriate, doesn't work favorably. Um, and that the more information everybody can share at the same time will uh, allow us to proceed with less Tower of Babel activities and more direct focus and function on what we're supposed to be doing but I'm really apprehensive about rushing in until everyone understands the groundwork. And I think that is what needs to be established um, and that we can create as a board what works best for Delanco as a board. There's no, temp there are templates, 
but there's no template for Delanco of what's going to be the best way to do it. And that everyone understands it's going to be more work intensive, at least to get set up if we're going to do it quickly and in a way that's going to endure, or we can just rush into it and it'll be catch as catch can. It'll be, wait a minute, I didn't know we could do this. Why can't we do that? Instead of, you know, and that would be, I would think the policy committee that would be the one that would be guiding us to set that up, if I'm not mistaken, of how, you know, we should function. At the same time, everyone will have input, but it needs to be handled in some context that we already exist in order to change how we exist, I would, I would prefer. And uh, the other thing is that we're going to have a new board secretary and how that may affect you know, what what and how that person functions and have input uh, as well. And to know that's going on. I think it's imperative that we change something. It, it, it obviously doesn't work. People feel excluded, myself times as well. Um, we live in a day and age where you know, I mean, I have no idea because I try to avoid it as much as possible. I'm not working um, as many emails and as many texts and as many calls and as many that come through the transom for everybody every day. And what you can get to, you can't get to. And it, it also interrupts what we're doing. And I've seen over the last few years, it's kind of handicap Mr. Mersinger. He spends as much time rationalizing and defending and just telling us what he's doing instead of just being able to do his job and that we, okay, he's doing what he has to do and here's what we need to know about. You know, we, would, we wouldn't need to have the same, a similar lengthy superintendent report on a monthly basis or weekly basis because we'd be knowing what's going on. So I think that would be, I, I think to me, that's a missing link, but I also am apprehensive about our use of social media in, in ways that are, are in, have good intentions so the public is informed, but there's not everything that the public can be informed about. And likewise, whether it's, you know, whoever is a leader in a school, in a district, someone, you know, the buck stops there. They make a decision. And it's set up in such a way that, okay, as the Board of Education, we evaluate our superintendent every year. And in doing so, we give him the feedback that he needs of, hey, this we think he could have done better or this is an issue if nothing else here's our concerns or this is this person's concern it's positive feedback and i think we just need to figure out the timing of it to do it and that needs to be i think basically a board meeting doing that to to just do that not to vote on something and then find out what we voted on um, i hope we're not going to do our preschool program i've used this analogy before up, throw the kids in the river and then we'll teach them to swim if they survive <laughs> you know um we have it within our destiny to create the board we want and to function the way we want so it, it jonathan swift if you know anything about the uh that was the reference with the babies so okay uh, thank you anyone else i just wanted to get that out there been on the board quite a while. I've had a pretty intense, intense and intensive background in education. And I think it's pertinent because we're, we're getting a device, a, a divisive board, and we have transitions going on between new board members coming in, their expectations, and likewise, the school boards association is having um, some of the same issues we have here widespread 
of not of new board members not they're, they're trying to figure out how we can do it so new board members before they're actually seated and in the process of voting and understanding already have the governance won. So before they are sitting in a board, otherwise it was the same thing for me. And I've been in education over 40 years. What the heck is this? What are we doing? How does this work? I don't understand this. And some of the same questions that Steve and Kate and Vera have, I've had as well. And some of the other people on the board. So it's trying to figure out to work together to be helpful and get something done that needs to be done. Thank you, Harry. Stephen, did you want to say something? Sure, I'll just make a pretty quick comment. Um, so yeah, I'm in favor of, of switching to the committee of the whole structure, and I think it would be I think it would be helpful to members of the board and also members of the public just to be able to see more of what's going on. Um, and if that means, you know, I think two meetings per month is not that big of a, uh, a, an a you know, work for request, especially considering that some members were going to committee uh, meetings, you know, once or twice a month anyway. Um, so I'm, uh, yeah, I want to echo a lot, of, uh, a lot of what Harry said about the benefits of moving to a committee of the whole. Uh, I would say from my perspective, that I think we should just, I think we should move a little more quickly. I think we have a good opportunity right now. I mean, we're summertime. Um, we'll have a little bit of time before the next school year gets started. I think we should kind of tear the band bandaid off. And um, so, for instance, my, my, uh, one thing that Harry said was that we should we should set, we should have the policy committee figure out how this is going to work first, and then come back and vote on it as a full board later. But to me, that's sort of contrary to the, the spirit of what I'm hoping to do here. I think we should switch to a committee of the whole structure and then have that conversation about the board's policies in public so that there's nothing concealed and so that people can follow our reasoning, essentially. Like a um, session? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it might even be a good idea to schedule an extra work session just so that we can, so that we don't have to make the meeting quite so long to discuss, um, yeah, like a policy-focused work session in, in July or August uh, might be helpful. It might be a way to take care of some of these concerns. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm in favor of the, the full committee of the whole, no subcommittees, and um, as quickly as we can. I think we could vote on it next month if people are on board. Thank so, you, thank you. thank you. Marissa, may I say something? You may. Well, as the longest serving person on the board, I understand where you're coming from, Steve, but I have seen meetings where we have been sitting here to 10, 11 o'clock at night. You know, it has some good ideas what you're suggesting, but if you really think it's going to be two meetings a month, I know it's probably going to be significantly more. I think we should get back to our regular meetings. And once we're into a regular meeting, then, you know, talk about it. The hybrid plan, I'm not in favor of committee of a whole, but the hybrid plan does have some good features to it. And definitely with when we talk about finance, maybe we should get everybody involved in finance. But for some of the other things that don't require, everyone to meet. I think, you know, so having our small committees is a good way of doing things. Things can be discussed and can be taken care of very quickly, where with a committee of a whole, it's going to be a whole meeting. And we all know some people can talk about some things continually. So I, I just think, you know, keeping it short would be much better. That's just my views. Thank you. Um, this is Vera here. My view is that we do need to have some rules in place to keep the um, the meetings moving along, maybe time limits on speaking, um, because, you know, our time is precious and we and we want to get through things. Um, I can sort of see what Phil is saying, because some people might have more of an interest in um, the curriculum and and other people just want to trust the experts in it who have experience. So I can sort of see what he's saying that, um, you know, a lot of emphasis on finance might be good. Um, in general, for the public, though, a committee of the whole would be better. Thank you. Uh, Vince, do you have a, a preference? You know, I was looking at committee of a whole, but, uh, you know, Phil made a point on you know, the smaller committees, that wouldn't be necessary. I mean, 
you know, I've talked to Joe about facilities, even if that's necessary. Um, I would just, you know, recommend like, yeah, to, to having time limits. If we do it the right way, it may not, it, it could be done right, I think. But yeah, I think the main ones would be, you know, when it comes to finance or maybe personnel, you know, that's where I think when it's a bigger type of decisions, you know, you, maybe committee as a whole, and we could, you know, I think the hybrid might work well. Can I add one more small comment? Just as, yeah. Um, you just made me think of something. I think so for facilities, even though it's a, you're, as, you're, as you say, it's maybe more minor, it's, um, it's off to the side a little bit, but part of that, part of the way that basically that, that committee meets less frequently. So even if we included it in the committee of the whole, you know, even if we were talking about it as a, as a full group, uh, it's there's sort of less, it's not that big of a concern. I think like lumping it in and keeping it in the committee of the whole would, would not, it wouldn't weigh us down because there are fewer meetings already on that topic, if that makes sense. <laughs> Thanks. How, how often have the meetings of committees met? I think that's one of the problems and issues for people as well, isn't it? That the meeting, that the committees haven't been meeting and they feel excluded or they don't mm -hmm. feel that they're being heard. So, so Harry, that's a good question. On the board. Over the years, it's been handled differently uh, with different presidents. Of course, you were president, Phil was president, Marissa's president. So, and it's been handled differently. However, I feel like over the past couple of years, we've actually done better with committee meetings than we ever did prior to that. Still, uh, you know, having heard all of this and, and just knowing the responses, having discussed it for months, uh, you know, I, I understand what everyone is saying. Uh, but I actually fully agree with what Stephen is saying that if decisions are going to be made on how the committee of the whole works, then the committee, the, the whole board should decide that. It should not be a select group of people that now decide how the larger group functions when you're moving in that direction. It seems to run counter, just like Stephen is saying. So again, I, I mean, I serve at the will of the board, not at the will of whatever I choose. I don't get a vote on this, but if the will of the board is to be carried out, my take on it is the will of the board is easier to understand when all board members are involved versus having select groups of board members. Cameron, do you have a point of view? Uh, nothing I'd say different from the thoughts and concerns I voiced on the uh, survey. I think the hybrid is a, uh, more than decent idea, especially for the bigger issues that the board as a whole faces, mainly finance and personnel issues. Uh, so I'll pretty much stick to my guns on what I said there. Thank you. Catherine? Yeah, could you elaborate a little bit more on the hybrid so that people from the public know what we're talking about? Is that a good thing? I think what we're referencing in regards to a hybrid model would be, of course, we would, all of the committees that we touched on during the agenda would be open you know, for discussion. However, a hybrid model would, I guess, reduce full, full I guess, um, interaction or it would be more executive session discussion um, by a select group. I'm not really sure how it would play out. I think that's something that would need to be decided by the full committee if we decide to move in that direction outside of where we are now. I think there's a lot of unknowns. I think it's something that if we're looking at even changing where we are right now, which it seems as though majority is interested, I think then we should really have like a work, like a work session to discuss how we want it to, to play out and then vote on it, um, you know, at a meeting and say, hey, let, let's do it. We've discussed it. We understand how we want it to play out. We've set our own boundaries that we're going to adhere to. We're going to be good citizens and 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 try to be as transparent as possible while still understanding there are some things we cannot discuss publicly and there are some things that the community is just not privy to because it's confidential it, you know it could pertain to finances could pertain to personnel could pertain to a specific subject in the school so um but we need to to figure that out so i think the hybrid model would definitely be something for further discussion at a workshop type meeting. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I see what you're saying, and I, uh, you know, I get where everybody's coming from with this. From my perspective, I, I 
happen to agree with Steve on this, that it, 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 if the will of the board is to have a committee of the whole, then we should decide as a whole what the committee of the whole is going to look like. And that's just like the most logical way to approach it from my perspective. The idea of having um, a hybrid model seems also counterproductive to me to the goal of the committee of the whole, which is that everybody understands what's going on uh, on the board and on the public. Now there's obviously, as you said, there's gonna be stuff that we can't talk about, personnel issues, um, anything, you know, anything that's confidential, those things obviously wouldn't be discussed during the committee of the whole public session. They would be, you know, discussed at a separate session. And to the point about there being things that not everybody needs to be involved in, um, for example, the, the, uh, the uh, facilities committee, um, I mean, that committee seems to rarely meet. I'm not on it, but from my <laughs> understanding, they rarely meet. And um, it's usually only when it's something that's like a big issue that needs to be discussed. Mm -hmm. And to me, the whole board should be on those big issue conversations, right? So I don't see why we would separate that out as part of the hybrid model that only some people are on, just because most of the time, it's not something everybody needs to be involved in. Mm -hmm. So to me, all issues are important issues and I wanna be involved in all of them and I want the public to be able to know what's happening with all of them. That sounds good. I appreciate that. Thank you, Bob. Do you have a preference or a comment? Well, my preference is, uh, was to keep it as it is uh, due to, quite frankly, uh, some petty, petty things that have taken place uh, during our, our open meetings. I. I think that's been counterproductive, but uh, thinking about it, the hybrid idea sounds good, but what I'd like to see is, uh, you know, that we get, the, we get the ground rules down up front before we move to this, because if we don't, then it's like an open, it's an open book, who knows where things will go, uh, you know, and uh, quite frankly, um, that it, that also could be dangerous, you know, in light of what took place tonight earlier. So um, I, that's my main concern. I would like to see us put together, you know, a solid plan and know that we may have to change as things move along, as we get, you know, more experience uh, under our belts with, with handling it that way. But uh, you know, quite frankly, um, you know, the committee reports uh, what their decisions are to the main board. And, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, from a time perspective, like tonight, I was coming from Springfield up in North Jersey. I left there at four o'clock to be here for a meeting at six. And so to me, time, you know, this happens quite a lot. Uh, you know, for me, so a lot of times, you know, long meetings uh, can be uh, can be tedious, so to speak. Um, you know, we've never denied the public. I, I don't think you know uh, information on what's going on. We know there's certain things we can't talk about, um, but um, you, I don't know how many people were on tonight on the on the Zoom calls. I mean, there's they're very easy to, to get on and you see what kind of participation we have. And, that, and I don't think that's the board's fault. I, I saw that on township committee. We would have a committee meeting and there was nobody in the room. And uh, you know, so in, until it impacts somebody personally, you know, usually you don't hear from them. So, uh, yeah, so anyway, that's, that's kind of my rambling thoughts here. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate that. Thank you. I, I was actually very uh, on point with what you're saying. Uh, they were my similar viewpoints as I expressed in my survey um, response. I think that transitioning to the committee of the whole is, is a good idea. I don't think it's a bad idea. My biggest concerns were the fact that we do need ground rules. We need some boundaries. Um, we as a group, need to set the standard of how we're going to move forward and how we're going to act. Time limits would be great. Understanding truly what can be said, what cannot be said publicly, because these are open meetings. So just so everybody knows, and I'm sure the majority does know, because this is the, obviously the opportunity as to why we're doing this, is that the public will be 
able to sit and listen to these meetings. Um, they're open. So we have to be very conscious of what we say. My biggest concern was that a board member could uh, make a mistake that could be litigious, you know, that, that could be a, a real big problem. So I was more in, in the mindset of, I wanna protect our board because we are relatively new and we will be newer as time goes on. So I'm trying to be forward thinking as well and, and being sure that those parties that are coming onto our board will be protected as well. But I do think that if we have the guidelines in place, and we, we set it down and everybody agrees that we're going to follow these guidelines. We're going to stick to what we say we're going to do. I think that we can make it work. And I think it can be a really great thing. We just got to be sure that we're all on board as a team to follow and to get to the finish line together and not try to push anybody one down. We don't want to push anyone down. It's so not. Marissa, rather than starting from scratch with this, I mean, I have a network of colleagues that I can reach out to and say, you know, we're, we're looking at transitioning from smaller committee structure to a committee of the whole or a possible hybrid. Just let them know that we're looking at different options. And I mean, there could be a board out there right now that has a committee of the whole list of guidelines in their policy, you know, because it takes time to establish the guidelines, then put them in the policy, first reading, second reading, you know. So you might have this done already. And it doesn't mean that we wouldn't adjust it as needed for Delanco, but but it doesn't, it, you don't need to start from zero on something if other people have already done some of that work. I agree. School, I think it's a great, it's a great starting point, uh, like a template to kind of build on for Delan that's Delanco based, you know, that works for our group, our current board members. I think so I could reach the, out to Jesse Adams and then also reach yes, out to colleagues yes. directly and say, what what is out there when it comes to a resource for the, a board to use? as guidelines or, or bylaws or whatever might exist out there for this type of topic. And then I can get that to the board ASAP. I mean, ASAP meaning I'm waiting for other people to respond. So it could be a few weeks from now. So it's not gonna be- I mean, we've definitely had policies of both types that you're referring that, you know, most of them are either school boards or stress SMA are not policies that we've created um, so, that, so that the board could look at examples from other districts i mean they're they're not something that i would take that i have they're not my something i wrote myself um but we certainly we have them and i'd be happy to you know share them because they're obviously public documents i think that's great i think it's important to have a diverse collection of templates so that we can look at it and truly make it our own so that we all are in agreement of how this process is going to move forward and we're happy with it because that happiness is going to allow us to make great decisions and have great discussions. So I'm on board with that. I would prefer that prior to next meeting, we have a work session to kind of hash this out. I, and maybe it's before the next meeting, like it's similar to what we did this evening, you know, but in a workshop type session prior to where we can, we'll have this information prior to the next meeting. We will have reviewed it. Hopefully we've made some personal notes as to our aspirations, as to how we hope this will go. And then at that work section, session, excuse me, we will discuss it um, and hopefully come up with a really good framework with how we hope to proceed forward. And then in the meeting, I think that we can probably, you know, say, look, this is what we wanna do. Who's in agreement with it? Hopefully we vote it. And I don't even know if it has to be voted Joe because it is currently our part of our policy that we can move to this direction. You can let me know for sure how it has to go. But I yeah, think I'll, I'll okay. work with Susan on that as well as Strauss SMA because our policy is pretty clear that the board may choose to operate as a committee of the whole. There's just no, there's no list of guidelines. It's just, yes, we can do that. And yeah. that's it. I'm looking and, at school boards right now. There says the same thing. It basically gives you the opportunity to, if, if you, you know, do it either way. But what Jesse Adams recommended was that we come up with a set of guidelines to build into that bylaw so that it's clear what that committee of the whole looks like if we we're going to move in that direction. So I feel like, you know, I can start taking steps within the next couple of days. July 14th is the next board meeting, but there can be a work session planned prior to that. It's just a matter of advertising, making sure we follow all the proper procedures. Well, like July 14th is right around the corner. So, I mean, we don't even have to like, I don't think we have to rush because it's legitimately right around the corner. Corner. No, but what we could do is actually have July 14th. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Susan, 
July 14th is already listed as a meeting. Couldn't we use that as a work session and then move July 20, have July 21st be our regular meeting? You know, there, there's a way to shift it around. We're going to have to do that anyway if we move to that structure because we can't just suddenly be ready at a certain point in the month. We have to always have that work session prior. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with using your next advertise meeting when you get the agenda together. The agenda will just be clear that this, you know, you're maybe you're not taking any action or the only action that you're going to be taking has to do with um, the committee formation or committee of the whole formation. I, I, I personally am in agreement with that. Um, and I, I, I think it's a great idea. I think that we should utilize the next July 14th as our workshop, as the opportunity to set the, the plan in action. And then we have our meeting on July 21st. And then we just keep moving forward. And I, I think too, this kind of piggybacks into or kind of introduces the next topic, which is old business, which is in-person meetings. Because I think that it would be great to have us all sit around a table or sit at a table or sit anywhere to have this discussion um, to plan this, to move forward. Um, I don't know, Joe, what were you going to say specific to this, but, um, that's kind of how I feel. Like I, I, I personally would like to be in person. I think that it's, um, it, it's, it's nice. It's welcomed. Uh, communication seems to flow smoothly that way. Thoughts? I think we're ready to move forward with it based on some of the guidance that we're getting. And we see a lot of other districts doing that. So Susan, not to put you on the spot, but <laughs> if we were to move in that direction, do you believe that it's necessary to do a live stream at the same time? And I'm only asking this because what we ran into was, in my view, a logistical issue of having an in-person meeting, attempting to live stream it. People can't hear. They don't know what's truly going on. You know, and so my, my issue is, you know, we actually don't have the proper equipment to even do a tr true live stream. Is it something that's required or is it something that's just record the meeting, continue to record the meetings and share them with the public? I, I just, I don't want to prevent transparency, but at the same time, live streaming has been a logistical issue for us. So, I mean, I think right now um, you do not, you're not required any longer to live stream your meetings. If you have in-person meetings with, you know, you're still required to have a um, some social distancing. Um, the mask mandate, as long as students weren't involved, it was removed. So you can actually have meetings without wearing masks. Um, you can require them if you guys want, you know, you guys want masks to be worn, that's completely up to you. Um, but you, if you have an in-person meeting, you don't have to uh, continue to live stream. I'm gonna comment in here. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should stick with the Zoom meetings. I I, I think that uh, that Mr. Mersinger is right that, that that doing the hybrid, you know, running a stream from the meeting was uh, difficult. It would really take some some more audiovisual equipment, um, which you know I'm not sure would be a wise investment, honestly. Uh, right now we have this great setup where the public can watch, uh, parents and other community members can um, participate. They can ask questions. You know, there's really, I mean, something so. There's something so valuable about being able to have these meetings streaming in the evening and you know if parents want to tune in for part of it they can listen to the meeting while they're doing their dishes you know while they're getting the kids ready for bed that sort of thing uh whereas having the meetings in person we're just excluding a lot of people and you know parents are busy we're gonna have far fewer people attending the meetings and, and hearing what's going on so i think in the same spirit of openness that that, uh, that makes me want to switch to a committee of the whole, I think we should stick with Zoom meetings you know, for the foreseeable future permanently, but that's my perspective. I agree with Steve. If our goal is to increase participation, which you definitely need parents on board if you want to have a good collaboration between home and school, Zoom meetings are the way to go. If you think that parents would not want Zoom meetings, why not put a survey up on delanco.com or a poll asking? That would be, you know, we wouldn't be second guessing parents or stakeholders in the community. We, we would be seeking their input. But I 
I think that participation has been greater with Zoom meetings because people can watch the meetings when they have time. That's all I want to say about that. How, how many people are actually watching this now? I'm a, anyone? That's 30, 39 total. 39, 30, and that includes us. 13, so there's 26 people? People will so, watch after the meetings. When they have time, they might tune, they might watch it whenever it's posted on YouTube when they have free time. That's the beauty of these Zoom meetings. We could still record the meeting. I'm all in favor of going back to a regular meeting. You know, it's supposed to be an open public meeting, you know, and like you said, Marissa, we could always record it. Yeah, we can record the meeting and have it available for access for individuals to view at their leisure. Um, we can still keep the um, open um, comment uh, packet so that we could have ideas. Yeah, we could do an, that online public comment form. That's it, yes. And Stephen, you're great with technology. You, you could probably record the meeting better than, than not, Albert, no offense to you, but our equipment isn't what Stephen has. <laughs> and two, yeah, we talk about that. But, two, previously but I, we were discussing and having meetings with masks on. That mandate, I believe, may be lifted. Communication will be more readily heard or easily heard, I should say, um, without the masks. That was a big um, distraction and restriction to our voices getting out past like our immediate like space. But yet it was also, that was the reason why they were we were wearing. When you talk them. about um, streaming the meeting in person, is it gonna look like it does now with, with each person's name and so when somebody talks the public knows exactly who's talking is it going to be like that well it'll be one camera focused on all board members so when you speak they will see you i mean you'll be i mean it sees everybody so basically imagine us all at the table at the school board you know how we would sit previously the camera would capture i would hope the objective would be all of us or if we had somebody in there, they would have to maybe move the camera. I don't know how it would as, work. Yet. As a teacher, this is, you know, if I was teaching a class and I wanted all the students participating, I wouldn't want to video like a big table full of students. This, this way I know who's participating, who's talking. Zoom is obviously a better way to, a much clearer way. You can hear people more clearly. But hey, maybe the parents would like your idea or the stakeholders in the community. Let's put it on a survey on Delanco.com and then we'll know. Well, if, if the board wishes for me to create a survey and send it out, that's a, I'm, I'm not going to say easy. It's going to take some time to put some questions together. But, you know, that is a task that can be done in a very streamlined way and we can get some feedback. So, Marissa, you're the president. You know, what's what's the will of the board on that? You know, if I may. The survey, I mean, it would depend. I just want to say this about the survey. I think sometimes we get a lot of the same people, though, that, you know, comment and, and especially in summer, I don't know what kind of responses we would get on on that in particular. Um, not to throw a wrench into that idea. I mean, maybe but, um, somebody could post it on residents of Delanco. Yeah, I mean, it would yeah, yeah, yeah. to every recipient and on our website. And then I'm sure it would go out to the, yeah, the Facebook page resident. I mean, so. And, um, I'm going to be facetious for a moment, but can we force people? I mean, can we force them to watch it? I mean, can we decide which media they have to watch it in? I mean, at some point, that's why we're an elected board to make decisions and to present information and make decisions. It's a representative democracy. That's what we were elected to do. And I think it would behoove us if we Joe, if you're going to contact Jesse, ask him if he can be part of that to help without anyone external organizing us. It, it, we're going to keep talking around issues, mm -hmm. I have a feeling. You mean and Jesse that involved for the going in, back in person? Yeah, or that someone from the school board's association, just like they had an expert on contracts, they have experts on all these different topics. They may have someone who could help us because they they either because a lot of people that are that are work for the school boards association are former school board members and if they find someone who had a similar experience that can guide us that would be helpful if jesse 
Jesse may, and if not, he may know who would that person might I be to help us. This is that complicated. I think Mr. Mersinger can handle a survey. Yeah, we could go back to the regular meeting about a survey. See our people. Yeah. I have one more comment. I'm not talking about, about a survey. I'm talking about someone to guide the board in this trying to figure out are we staying the same? Are we going to board of the whole? You know, or are we have some videoing? Hybrid? We're talking about Zoom meetings versus in person and and then videoing the, the in-person meeting. That's what we're talking we're having, about right this now. This is why I'm- And the residents can guide that us. We have someone outside. That's what you're talking about. It's not what I'm talking about now, Vera. Can I, can I get one more little comment in here um, on the topic of meeting in person? I mean, we should not forget that there is still a global pandemic happening. There are the variants spreading. Cases are probably gonna get worse in the fall and we don't know we just don't know what that's going to look like. Not everyone in our community is vaccinated. I frankly would, well, first of all, if we're meeting in person um, and we had, you know, 30 people, 40 people all in the same room, I would feel um, a little uncomfortable. And I certainly would, I would wear a mask. Um, so I think that some of these, some of these arguments in favor of, of meeting in person are, are just not going to play out. Um, some people, people certainly will be wearing, wearing masks. I'm going to be concerned. I mean, I'll be, it'll be a big distraction. Um, I and think also the, and the video itself will be less. Back in, I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I thought you were done. I just don't see the point of taking needless risks, and, uh, especially when we're. I mean, to me, it's simple. Going back to an in-person meeting is excluding people. It's trying to make our work more secretive. It's trying we to will keep absolutely. They are encouraged to come. To the They're encouraged to come to the meetings. We want them to come to the meetings. We want all stakeholders of the community come, to come to our meetings. And if they can't, we want them to watch the Zoom we tape, we tape for them. We will open I mean, up- I want, I want more than that. I want your feedback. I want, you know, I want, to, I want to bring more voices. Truly, I want more voices, more parents. You know, I wish there were more people making comments during public comment sessions on these meetings. And to me, Zoom is the way to do that. Only a small fraction of parents are ever going to show up at an in-person school board meeting. Well, and, I, I understand but, that. And, but, and you're going to find that the same individuals who voice their opinion on these Zooms are the ones that come to the meeting and voice their opinion, because unfortunately that happens at times, you know, but um, if we're going to, you know, put the initiative out that our kids are going to go back to school, I think that we should follow. I think that we should make sure that we're safe, mm -hmm. but I think that we should follow. I I think that we can find the best way to be as transparent as possible. We are going to have these meetings now in our, I'm hopeful for the committee of the whole, they're going to see the workings of what we do and how we act and why we vote. And then I also think that our meetings will be just as great. And I think that as this, as things move forward, the kids will look forward to coming in and receiving their student of the month certificates. I think that's so important that we don't exclude them as well. I mean, it's great for them to be seen on a, a Zoom but it, it would, it's great for them to hear things in person because we do streamline these Zooms so that they're a little bit more, I know this might seem crazy, they're a little bit more timely. Uh, in the past, we would allow, you know, Mr. Mersinger or Mr. Conti to go into detail a bit more about those students of the month. And, and the kids were so proud and they stood there with their certificates and the, and the parents were able to take pictures of them with those certificates and with their peers. And I think that we're lacking in providing them that additional support as well. In addition, like I said, I'm I'm all for going back to in person. I think if if our teachers have been in person, if our students have been in person and they've been doing it, I am sure that we can follow and and do the same and be safe. I've, I, I've, I've been in person teaching, so this is a separate issue from going to school and teaching in person. It's a separate issue open it up to the residents, the stakeholders and the parents to a survey. I might have the wrong idea. You might be correct. Let's open it up to the residents who pay the taxes and get their opinion. Let me be the only one to speak who's been to an actual in-person meeting since January. Riverside's been doing it since January. And at that point, Riverside's got what, over half their members over the age of 50 in the high risk category who were unvaccinated at the time. And in March alone, trying to find a new superintendent, we met about six times in a closed room with masks on. If you want to meet in person with masks on, 
meet in person with masks on, if we can figure out how, we, if we want to do mask on or mask off based on state mandate, if we decide to go back in person, but there's no reason that we shouldn't go back in person. Riverside, like I said, has been doing it since January. We can continue. Sam, you don't want to ask the rest of Let me finish. All right, go ahead. Riverside's been doing it. We can continue to have the live. We can make, we won't have it as intricate as this. We'll have it live streamed or recorded because I know for a fact a lot of people enjoy listening to it, not live, but after the fact so they can say, hey, this is what was discussed. This is what was interesting. Maybe this is what I can bring up at the next meeting. People will still be able to come in to in person to ask questions and give their comments. And if, like Marissa said, if the kids are back and the teachers are back, there's no reason we shouldn't be back either. So from my perspective, I have a two-year-old who's unvaccinated and I have not been going out in public because while a two-year-old is not a high risk group, there are two-year-olds that die from COVID and I'm just not willing to put my daughter's life at risk. Die from the flu. Oh, come on. How, what does that have to do with what I'm saying to you right now, Bob? Yeah, what I'm saying is, as far as what Cameron said is, let's get back. The school's going back. The teachers have been back. There's no reason why we can't meet in person. But to, to go around and scare people, oh, the, the COVID uh, variants are out there and so forth. I'm at a high risk. I have been vaccinated. I have been tested many times because I have to for my job to go certain places and I've been tested negative. I, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, that, you know, there's no need to scare people like- One of those know. things that's a personal choice, Bob. Yeah, and that's what it is. And then, because then taking risks like that doesn't mean that everyone else has to, whether we have to be encouraging parents to be taking those risks. Well, what is wonderful about- <laughs> Don't to me in-person meetings is that two individuals, I believe we have a policy that two individuals may stream in virtually if they choose to do so. Yes. So if if Catherine or Stephen, you are opposed to in-person for personal preference and safety, you certainly could utilize that policy and say that the two of you, as long as you get in soon enough and say, it, you know, before everyone else say, we would like to take advantage of that and be virtual for the meeting. So, so what, if, what if three people want to stream in? What's the policy? No, I, would, I would like I to ask policy Mrs. states Hodges. for two. I would like to ask Mrs. Hodges a question. Sure. Mrs. Hodges, are you there? I am. Um, Sorry, can so, you hear yeah. So we, uh, I believe there's currently a policy that only two people can um, connect virtually to a meeting, an in-person meeting, and I believe no one, um, maybe only one person can connect to an executive session meeting. So I would think that this kind of policy is, um, is restricting representation. So, or e if we had that kind of policy, we would, we would need to vote by a two thirds majority to have a policy that would restrict my ability to attend the meeting. If I'm the third person who wants to connect virtually and Steve and Catherine are already ahead of me in line, then I can't be in a meeting. I can't vote. That's so I, I haven't seen your I haven't seen your policy that says that. I mean the guidance from um, like the local government services about having remote meetings that was kind of it was a lot of old information even though it was sort of revamped um, after you know once COVID hit. Um, it, it doesn't restrict it to two. So if your policy does, that would be something you would have to change if you wanted it to not say that. Um, I don't think that's, the, I'm not aware of any law that says it has to be restricted to two people or something like that. And that's not, I, a, if, you, if you look on um, the DCA um, notice, there's actually a lot of information um, on, their, on their page. They have a, um, I don't know if they call it a, a it was like a publication they put out. Um, it's a guidance document, and I'm happy to send that to everybody if you want to see it. I believe Miss oh. Darmo, Mrs. Darmo, may be correct in the uh, what she's saying. As that got in, I, I remember being on the committee and being against that because it was done at a time for a different reason. I have a feeling, 
uh, by a former board member for some yeah, the, reason. The, the policy does say two, and then it also says that you can't participate in executive remotely. But if we look at what we've done for the past year and a half, that violates the policy every time. So yeah. I'm not saying that we should violate policies, but what I'm saying is that the circumstances we've been under go outside of that policy. So, um, you know, and, and like Susan, like you're saying, the policy could be revised, obviously. That's, right now, that's why I said meeting. That was my original suggestion. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry, Joe, for cutting you off. That was my original suggestion of having the policy committee figure out the basic policies so we can attempt to accomplish what we want to accomplish and have the, you know, bring it to the board here. Because otherwise, we're going to just keep going around like this, which is everybody has input. But once again, what are we doing to be able to have a meeting? And is our meeting, it's not set up to intentionally exclude anyone. Well, but it does, and we need to change the policy if we're, if we've been doing, if we've been violating the policy, then, you know, what does that mean? I well, think that just, I think you guys approved something. I, I think we sent you like something that was allowing you to just move all your meetings virtually, um, at least a sample that, that we sent, you know, last March. Um, so that probably at least... Covered, gave you right. some leeway as far as what your policy says but if, yeah. if your policy can still says two people obviously if you're going to change it you should look at that policy and make a decision on whether you want that to still be the restriction so how quickly can we make a revision the policy committee make a revision a, a revision can happen even upon first reading as long as the board uh, elects to suspend the bylaw that requires two readings do that before, where we said, okay, this policy needs to be in place immediately. And so we suspend the bylaw. So basically, in order to do that, you have to ignore another policy in some way or, or another. But no matter what, it's, you know, I'm, I'm looking it up. And, and like Susan is saying, there were certain statutes put in place. Uh, there were new policies put in place about the restart and recovery and remote learning and remote everything. But no matter what, I mean, everything we've done for the past year, in my view, exists outside the boundary of so many policies that already existed prior to COVID-19. And, and when it comes to what Stephen and Catherine and Vera are saying, I completely understand why. I'm not going to say that it's better in person or better virtually, but what I will say is virtually, I see number one, it is safer, that's fairly obvious, but number two, there is more participation and more involvement. So I'm not saying that I favor either direction, but the points that are being made by Stephen, Catherine, and Vera are very valid. They shouldn't, or policy shouldn't be restrictive. They should be inclusive. And I want to just add that when I favor Zoom, I'm leaving out the question of how dangerous COVID is, is it better for students to be in person, which of course I believe it is. I'm leaving all that aside. I'm just talking about how clear it is when we see each person talk, how easy it is to understand each person, the sound quality. That's what I'm talking about, about why I prefer Zoom. I'm not talking about contagiousness. I'm not talking about students. The clarity of the message is better with Zoom. That's that's it. I'm in favor of going back to a regular meeting where we're sitting there and you can actually see all your board members. I mean, isn't that what the public wants to see? Everyone that's on the board? And let's people that want to wear masks ask, will wear masks. Let's that's ask all. the public. Let's ask the public. I, I don't want that public to, to decide for me if I should be wearing a mask or not. What's the public have to That's do with not, that? I'm I do think it's Zoom a decision that not. impacts the public stakeholders, and I do think that we should involve them in the question. It and impacts them to participate to make, in real time. To me, this is such a big, I'm not sure where this falls as a policy matter, but it's such a big decision that I don't think a 50-50 vote as a board is sufficient. I mean, I think it's this is a two-thirds vote kind of situation. Because in practice, what, you know, what, what would happen if five members of the board vote the to meet in person, members vote against it, then I'm, my hands are tied. I have to either go to board meetings in person or 
or attend by a Zoom and struggle to hear, or I can resign from the board. I mean, it's like, I really think we need to do the inclusive thing and stay on Zoom. I hope um, those aren't your was three <laughs> options. <laughs> that was, oh, I, I'm talking about, I didn't mean to bring that up lately, but I'm just saying it's, it's not very welcoming to me. I mean, to, 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 the idea of five, five, a five to four vote, you know, a split decision like that. Well, what's it supposed to be, Steve? That's where democracies work. People <laughs> vote. No, there's a two and you have vote you either carry. live by the majority of the vote or you don't. You either a choose to say, option. hey, but my point of view, my point system. of view didn't go through, it didn't win. I lost. That's and now I move on to the next vote I have. When it's trying to persuade you, I'm trying to persuade other people to vote. You voted it's yet. it's Harry, do we use Robert's rules of order? Robert's rules of order. You got me. Order. Yes, you I believe me. we do. I believe that's what I was told when I first went on the on the board. And there's certain situations where you do need a two thirds majority vote in Robert's rules for order. And the, the Robert's rules of order is how we run our meetings. It's not the bylaws of our organization. It, it has there's two to different be with issues when, Vera. when you need a two thirds majority and. But when you say we're not voting really on death penalty, really honored. <laughs> it's contradictory. So is, is the question do you need two thirds majority to change how you're doing your meetings? Is that what you're looking at? I think when there's certain questions like um, our participation might be restricted, like when we were talking about limiting people, only two people to virtually connecting, that sort of um, issue. If, if someone might be restricted from participating in voting, that is such a serious issue that when, when those questions come up, it would require a two thirds majority. Am I correct, Steve, when I was thinking? I think so, we would revisit that policy if we decide to go in person. I think that was directive that we would revisit that and right. change it because what we're following now is antiquated. So, and I think just so you know, under right. Robert's rules, yeah, yeah, the two thirds right. vote is specific to like types of motions. It's not specific mm -hmm. to what you're talking about, I think, which is a little bit more detailed about policy. The, the Robert's rules, which I believe you have adopted, um, most school mm -hmm. boards in New Jersey have adopted. It sounds like you guys are all aware of that. But the, um, the two thirds vote is usually for like like changing a motion, preventing a question to come to, it's how you're running your meeting, not and also though anything policies. that infringes upon uh, one of the one of the voters' rights. So I, I couldn't. I didn't hear the beginning of what you said. It's also to be used if you're making a decision that would have an impact on one of the participants' rights. Um, it is a participant in the meeting. Yes. Yeah. So if it limits what, I mean, that's but that's not. I don't think that has to do with. Um, a policy on if you're going to have in-person meetings or if you're going to live stream your meetings. That's think, a different um, issue. If yeah. the, the two thirds vote is, I mean, I think the list has to do with, um, and I can pull it up if you, if you want me to, suspending one of your rules that you already have, um, preventing something from being considered by the, by the board, um, you know, limiting a debate on a certain topic, um, you need two thirds vote to like stop something and go on to something else if others still want to debate the issue. Um, you know, I think something else is like has to do with nominations. I don't think it has to do with um, and then taking away like somebody's board membership. So if you want to get rid of a board member, you would need two thirds vote. If there are others, I don't know them off the top of my head, but they're they're much more tailored toward running a meeting, not the rules that would govern you for operations so much. It's actually how you're running your meeting during the public meeting and votes are being taken. I hope that helps. I can start well, to see I'll say that Vera has, uh, uh, sorry, yeah. Vera proposed a, a survey, but short of that, I mean, if there are parents out there or anyone participating in this meeting by Zoom who, who values the Zoom, the, the, the ability to participate, the ability to follow these meetings live. Uh, now would be a good time to speak up. Uh, maybe to send, a, send an email to members of the school board. Maybe make a comment at the public comment session before the end of this meeting. 
Right, yeah, in well, the public comment. Back up comment over for the public comment on non-agenda item section. Right. Yeah, that would be when they should speak old business. Yep. One way or another. Thanks, Cameron. Also, if we're moving to Committee of the Whole and people are complaining about how long those meetings are going to be, wouldn't you want to do that on your couch? I agree. I'll second that. No. That's why they call them public meetings. That's it. This is the most public version of the meeting you can get, Phil. It, it, no, it's not. It is a bit of a dichotomy. It's public isn't public. Things there. It isn't. Yeah. If more people are invited, I just, I just want to say more just public. two. Vince, I'm sorry. What did you say? I'm sorry. I was just just real quick. I would just be in favor of the Zoom meetings just because I find it more efficient. I do a lot of meetings a day. Just I think we get more done, especially we did the committee by a whole. And because of that, if we went that route or a hybrid, I would I would suggest going that way. But um, if everybody commented, I would suggest maybe we move forward and uh, you know, unless there's something else, I, I don't know. <laughs> I second that. Going on for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I can't help. I'm sorry. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll mute myself. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> I think I think though I, I understand all the points being made, but I feel like we we've, we've operated under this system for about a year and a half, right? So I feel like if if we have board members objecting to moving forward with in person, and we understand why, I guess the question is, how important is that? How valuable is that to make sure that it's in person? And I'm not saying that I object to in person or object to online, but. I think we talked about it in executive, you know, if we're going to work together as a board and, and work together as a team, we want all members of the team to, to, to feel valued in what's happening. And I feel like that, you know, it's just, it's just something that, um, that I'm seeing here that, that I, I value the idea of being in person, but I also value the idea of having this online meeting. And I, I've actually seen value in it for months or a year and a half. I've also seen value in the pride of the parents and the students receiving recognition in person that we do not get in this meeting right now. I, I want to push back against that a little bit too, because the, okay. the, I, I, there was there is a lot of value in the, in the giving out those awards in person, but it also meant that the in person meetings were very long because the introduction with the with the uh, recognition for students could take you know forty five minutes an hour. You know, but like they a bigger it. You, they yes, but, but it's, but they've it, earned it's, it. <laughs> but but then the entire board and all the parents, you know, for instance, people who want to make comments have to sit there for an hour before the meeting starts, and then and then everyone's tired out. Uh, and unlike a Zoom meeting, you can't just you know easily you know get up and use turn off your video, use the restroom. There's like I mean, it's just a much. I, I really think that yeah, nothing like having that, a, problem. that was one of my critiques yeah. of the in person meeting was that the, the student recognition went on too long. It was counterproductive. Like having the children come into a meeting to be recognized in person with the full board. Believe me, it is it is something they look forward to and their parents look forward to. So it's a, it's a way of rewarding them for the good job that they did. I see that, but it's different from the purpose of a board meeting, which is to no you know, part, of our, part of our job is to do that. That's part of part of what we're supposed to be doing. We're, we're student we're achievement. Involved. Yes, yes, that's, that's it's recognizing to be long. supporting their achievements, which is it was very long. I mean, these are just long no matter what. It becomes hard, I, I, considering long. everyone's long. time is limited. It's like just to sit in one room, put in a room for an hour, and then start the meeting, and then the meeting is there for an hour later by the time it's finished, and we're switching to committee of the whole, which is going to make the meetings even longer. I think not it's necessarily. Just you're it actually can make the meetings much shorter. So the committee of the whole should handle a lot of the back and forth that we're doing like right now. That meeting that we have with the student achievement should be quick. It should be voting on things we've already discussed as a committee. Therefore, the meetings actually should be much shorter. Just saying. Yeah. And I just, I think I, although the um, government uh, advisory, you know, has right now has basically an explanation of how you can do um, meetings like this. Um, I, I do think that there will come a point, and I don't think we're there yet, where they will say, we are recommending that, that public boards go back to public meetings. Not that there won't be an opportunity for 
for example, someone to call in if they have a, um, you know, a possible conflict, but they're needed for a quorum. Um, but we, but that is not, I mean, that's not what the law is right now. I just want, I think what we're talking about is really still kind of what's happening right now, maybe not a permanent um, answer to whether or not you want to have your meetings streamed, because I do think that it, it's likely, I, I certainly can't tell you what they're going to say, but I think it's very likely that the um, school boards will recommend that you go back to in-person meetings at some point. They're just not there yet. Well, I mean, we can follow that guidance or not, but to me, you know, for us in Delanco, for this community, I think Zoom is better. Permanently. To me, I'm, I'm fine with going back into person in September when the kids go back into person or sooner. If we're going to ask our teachers and our students to go back in person, we should go back in person too. Let's support them, let's follow them, let's do the right thing and be good as citizens and, and, and do it the right way. If that's what we want to do, if we want to wait a little bit, but I don't think we should wait any longer than September because what, what image does that set? You guys, I'm a teacher you guys are the sacrificial lambs, but we can't possibly. Like I'm a teacher and I'm already teaching in person since uh, October 8th. This is a totally separate issue from teaching in person. It has to do with the clarity of the sound and the image, which increases particip participation. Let's ask the taxpayers what they prefer. It's Thanks. not the the taxpayers. It's they the taxpayers and the citizens elected us. That's why we're making these decisions. We're they have the input. We're, we're, Wait, let me please right. finish, Steve. They have input. It sounds as if you want a specific input that somehow will influence things in a different way than what the board's decisions are. It doesn't make sense. Otherwise, if we go back in person, I personally will probably wear a mask if I choose to wear a mask. And by then, if I feel like, well, wait a minute, Bob, I've had my flu shot this year, which I always get in early September because I was going into school for years. You know, but I also want to get another COVID shot if that's available too, because they're two different things. And I, you know, what you're saying on one hand is everyone should have the, you know, the equal opportunity, then give people an equal opportunity, but you can't force people to listen. You can't force them, you know, how many people just because someone's a taxpayer or someone voted or didn't vote, we represent the kids that are in our school. That's who we're representing. And we're representing the efforts for student achievement and why we wouldn't award them, why we wouldn't reward them with what we've been doing for years by recognizing them in the small community. That's where scale works to our advantage, that we can do that and it has real meaning for these individual students and families in our community that that's my feelings on it and you see we've got a so marissa i think the point you made though about the standard being the same for students staff members and us is a really good one and i'm not saying this again i mean i think both types of meetings are actually very effective in different ways but i feel like you're saying if we're saying the teachers and students will be in the building full day that's what the governor has announced that's what our plan says. And if we do something that runs counter to that by saying, well, we must now maintain a virtual meeting instead. You know, I, I do think that that's, a, it's just a different message being sent. Now, what I will say is if we continue with virtual meetings for other things, like for example, I might have virtual meetings with staff members, with parents, et cetera. I don't think that's an issue because that is a, a, a great convenience factor for certain people. and. I get that. But at the same time, you know, if the board is setting the standard that the board is virtual, but everybody else is in person, I, I understand that point very well. Thanks. Eric, I see your hand up, but I'm going to ask that you hold your questions or comments until public comment on non-agenda items, if you don't mind. I just don't want you to think I'm ignoring you. I do see your hand up, though. Um, okay, so we should have a, a direct action on how we're going to proceed and move forward because we've basically chewed on this bone long enough. I mean, literally like my bleeds, I'm either my ears are bleeding, my gums are bleeding. Let's move on. So um, I think we should basically vote on how we're going to move forward. 
We can then revisit the policy that speaks about two virtual. We can look into what Susan had spoken about so that we're not exclusive to members who do not feel comfortable nor safe at this point in time. Um, I do think that in September though, we should truly think about following the guidance that we're asking everybody else to follow and to be fully in person. Um, so I don't know if we want to make this direction to go in person in September, or if we wanna make this direction to go in person right now with the policy changing. So we need to decide that with a yes or no and how and when, and then move on. We can't have any, like this is just going on too long. Too, too long. I would Marissa, like Marissa, are you saying it's a straw vote or are you saying yes. that there's actually a motion that's going no, to No, this is going to be a straw vote and how we're going to because we don't have to vote one way or another. We're going to do a straw vote, which is actually more than what we did previously because before we just made the decision. So we're going to do the straw vote and decide how we're going to proceed moving forward. And then we will make modifications for those that feel as though that it's not right for them at this point in time. That's how I feel that we should move forward. So um, I will start by saying that I am for moving for in-person. I am for sooner than later, so I would be comfortable with July, but I would be compromising and okay with moving it to September as well. So that is my direction, is to go back in person. Bob, what would you like to do? I would like to go in person uh, as, as early as, I'm, I'm saying August, because that gives us a chance to change any policy uh, directives that, that we have now um or you know august or september um okay. definitely by september yes perfect thank you steven direction please oh i i think we should stay on zoom permanently i think it's you know we, we uh weren't planning to basically i think there's a lot of benefit in this structure um aside from the covid issues i think we should stay with zoom permanently just for clarity okay and thank you Harry. Oh, sorry, Harry. Yeah, I, I agree with Marissa's analysis of how we should proceed. Um, and, you know, I think that meeting in person, if if we're leaders, it's, you know, sending them in, you know, here, you guys go in, teachers, you go in, kids, you go in. Um, we're, we're not going in. <laughs> you know, that's not, it's not a very... Uh, professional, nor is it, you know, when we talk about community or representing the community, because people still have the options of wearing masks. It's not as if everything is either or, you, you, you know, and I mean, if I wanted to, I could be wearing my mask at the Zoom meeting, you know, it's, we're giving everybody all the possibilities, but September, if in fact, at that point, the school's reopening, we should be in person we should okay. get back to normalcy by then okay so you're on sooner i can September, live with yes. that as well perfect thank you vera how do you feel um i remember when harry tried to harry would connect by telephone in the in person very difficult to hear him i am for zoom not because of of COVID or the students, and I'm a teacher, I'm already in person. Zoom is better for clarity to hear and to see who's talking. So if, if people don't want to strain to hear, then we should be doing Zoom. That's it. Forever or until September? Forever. Okay, thank you. Phil? I'm in favor of going back to a regular meeting as soon as possible and yes harry did have dial up for the longest period he's in the modern age now congratulations harry almost almost phil almost uh, almost <laughs> barely <laughs> i can uh, concur with the previous statements for going back in person i could i'd prefer you know as soon as possible uh, my rv might be comfortable but uh it's getting a little <laughs> stuffy in here uh, in person would definitely be better if it has to be September so we can hammer out the policy issues with uh, online and figure out a technology thing, so be it. So in person. Thank you, Vince. I was, like I said, for efficiency's sake, I, I, I do believe Zoom works better, but Marissa, you turned my opinion 
on it. Uh, if the kids are back and the teachers, we have to set the example. I would, I would be happy with September if we had to. Um, I would like to see some kind of way we could, public can get into the meeting. You know, we had a great participation rate on with when we were Zooming. Like we never saw at the regular meetings, so that, that part too. But um, I'm open on it, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm, I could go either way. So I'm, I'm yeah. fine. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Catherine? I would like Zoom meetings indefinitely. I think it, oh, I, I know it increases civic participation. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Vicki, did you keep track of, of that information? I have detailed notes. I think, okay, because I think she's on mute. Yeah. <laughs> Go shoot. <laughs> in person, I wouldn't be muted. Um, yeah. <laughs> they had five in person, um, four for Zoom. Um, actually, Three. Do I count? Do I count Vince because he went kind of? He was. Even he if you go in person, in, in favor of it in September when if the kids are in in person, then it would be six. Yeah. Okay. So the majority so has ruled six, that three. Will be, I'm sorry. Is it six three the vote? Yes. Yes. So the majority has voiced their opinion that we will go back in person in September. I think that's fair. I think it's a good compromise. It'll give time for us to fine tune how we'll make it happen, how we'll be most effective. And so that we have as much transparency as possible. So that's that. Now we've gotten through that. So now we're going to jump into new business. <sighs> NJSBA's virtual workshop in 2021 is October 26th through the 28th, just as a good bit of information. So everybody knows. Um, but it's virtual. So do you want to, to be signed up for that? Oh, so that would be a question if people are interested in in that. Um, at the same time, be wary that people will have trainings they will have to satisfy. And if they're offered during that virtual training, what a great opportunity to do so. So um, that's up to the board if we are looking to have a virtual workshop for NJSBA because they're not hosting it in Atlantic City this year in person. It could be very beneficial for the board to have like the group membership or the group rate so that newer board members can get training completed. Uh, yeah. So experienced board members can get involved in other trainings. I'm, I'm not, not, and, and budget wise, it, it will cost more, but it could be very beneficial to the board considering like it was mentioned, there are required trainings that happen during that time. And they have to be paid for no matter what anyway. So, or we have to, look into having those opportunities available anyway. So um, Vicki, is this something that we could afford to do if we had a group membership for the virtual workshop in October? It's budgeted, yes. It is budgeted for. Then I am in favor, if the majority feels the same, in having that opportunity for training virtually from NJSBA because I think it's important that regardless of how it's presented, that we have the opportunity to take it. I mean, it's it's great training. And it's available for a year yes. online. You can, yes. you know, there's yeah. the Zoom, there yeah. where there's where it can work. And also some of the they they shorten a lot of the presentations. So they're even going to shorten some of them even more. And they were excellent. They were really fine tune and you got the core, the nugget of the, what they were talking about. And they were, they were just excellent. I, I you know, they were even better than in person. In it some was ways available online only if you were registered. Yeah, so, yeah. So right. new the members. That's why it's important. For the individuals that are registered. Not just the training because afterwards, anyone who, who signed up, it's, it's, I think it's up to like 20 people, you know, that, ask, yeah. once we, that you can access throughout the year. Hey, you want transportation information here? This was presented at in October for this information. This will help you. I don't know that you need like a full board vote on this. I think if any board member wants to attend, they can just let Vicki know and they would then get signed up. So they get the links will get sent to them. We just have to make it worth our while money wise, right? Because is there a board discount and for full board membership? As opposed to that, I don't know. It's it's, I it's usually for the 
for the 20 or 25 people. And I don't know what the individual rate is. Yeah, so it, why don't you I, I think we threw that last year. Two or three people, if it's, it's th I think three people, you might as well get the entire for 20 for everybody yeah. to be able so to. So why don't we just email Vicki to let her know if we're interested and if it makes sense financially, that's what we're going to do. I think, it, it, well, Vicki, let's, um, let's do Joe <laughs> just because Vicki's going to be moving on in a different direction. So you would email myself and Joe that you are interested in the virtual workshop by um, next Wednesday. Let us just say ASAP. I mean, we're ASAP. on some information from the NJSBA about it. And I, I remember last year, we actually registered pretty late, if I remember, and we were still Wait. able to be part of it because it's not like a, it's a space issue. Uh, you know, it's just a, an issue of getting more people onto that virtual platform. Okay. So let's let us know then sooner than later, but no later than next week. Um, I think that's fair. Are all distributions out? Uh, this is still new business, correct? No. Well, oh, yes, new business. Yes, I'm sorry. I, 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 was, I just yes. want to mention a couple of things I, I'd forgotten, which was that you might want to look in the eighth grade dialogue, which has been a really countywide pro procedure that's been going on for, for many years, very successfully, and it's expanded. And this year was done all, you know, on tape, you know, it was all videotaped and edited. And instead of having, you know, uh, whatever, 20 kids up on a stage, they were all, they were done in small groups of three or four or a couple or an individual kids. And because of COVID, it was very effective them talking about how it affected them. So I suggest you, you might wanna look at those. Um, and, and then also just, I'd forgotten in the, County news is that all the the officers, uh, including myself, were reelected again for the next three years, I believe. Awesome! Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yep, I have one thing I wanted to bring up. I got an email today from the NJSBA about the Emergency Connectivity Fund program. I just want to make sure that you guys, somebody else, got that because I don't have anything to do with it. But um, yes. So we're yes. aware of it. Uh, Albert is on here. He and I are going to be talking about it. I'm going to talk to the Morristown team about it, and it's uh, it's definitely on our list. Cool. That's a, a great program. Awesome. Um, I have two things that I want to mention real quickly. I need more information on the Delanco Long Range Facilities Plan, and I also need information. Um, this would have to be talked about in an executive session on how our monies. Uh, there was. Funds approved in January for security upgrades, and I don't. I have no information on if the money has been spent, what it's been spent on. I know that's um, confidential, so I would like to talk about that at some point. So those are two things I wanted to bring up. Thank you. Can that later thing be brought up later in our before we get into the? Uh, I didn't want to talk, or, want to talk about it at this meeting. I'm saying at a future meeting because this meeting's like super long already. Yeah, and we still we're, we're going to executive have, again. That's oh. what we're going back in executive again. That's why I was soon. suggesting do it very beginning of it and get it over with. Very soon. I think we need to take the time to just do what we have to do in executive and get right. that done. Um, yeah. Um, so are all distributions out? I would assume so. I will now open this up for public comment on non-agenda items, please. Um, I see, let's see, um, I see Mrs. Harper. Oh, wait, you're on. Oh, still muted. Mute. Uh, there it goes, there it goes. There was an unmuting me. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I've done a gazillion Zoom meetings, so I know <laughs> what I'm doing. Uh, I just have a point of good evening, everybody. I just have a, um, I just want to clarify something. And then I have one or two comments. My first thing is because it was kind of like, we went over it so quickly. And that was letter Z that uh, Cameron Jenkins went over. I am correct that the DTEA contract was ratified. Yes, ma'am. 
Yes. All right, just double checking because you know that would be of particular interest to us. <laughs> um, and I do want to, on behalf of the DTEA, um, as the president, I uh, we are thrilled. We were unanimous in our ratification of it, and we're thrilled to have um, a very respectful, um, very appropriate contract. And we do a, we are very very grateful that this is behind us now. Well, for about a year. But at least it's, you know, we've been working on this for a year and a half, so we're thrilled. So I just want to uh, mention that. Um, my second comment has to do with you were mentioning you wanted to hear from townspeople. Well, I am a community member and have been for many decades. Um, I really believe as far as, and you voted to go back in person, I really believe it's important. And Marissa, you mentioned very much about the students. That's what we're all here for, are our children. And I have to agree, their faces light up when they're there. Um, and you know what? I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound, but we can take, what, two hours to talk about whether or not we're going to do, you know, a certain forum, but we don't want to take a half an hour to recognize our kids in person. Um, that's my feelings as a member of the community and longtime taxpayer and, you know, as a teacher in the community for um, almost two and a half decades. So I just, I would like to see, and I'm glad that you voted to look to coming back in person. Yeah, you might not have as many people there, but you do have children that we need to, their social emotional learning it needs this affirmation. So. That's mine, and thank you for thank you. listening. And Mr. Mersinger, I will see you next Thursday for ESL. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mrs. Harper. Thank you, uh, Mr. Massa or Massa. I'm sorry. Thank you, Marissa. Um, yeah, it, my comments have changed a little bit, obviously, based upon the board's uh, straw vote that just happened. But I'm just going to make a statement here and just say, um, please be logical. The biggest gripe of any elected body is lack of participation from anybody other than those on that elected body. Not all, but a majority of your target audience as a board of education for meeting participants are residents who are parents of school age children. Participation in meetings, we can't argue, it's gone up with online meetings. While I absolutely see the merit of in-person meetings, it does hinder the ability of the public to attend. There are many ways you can honor these students. You can honor them at assemblies or events with their peers, which could guess, motivate them when they see their peers getting these awards as well. You could then mention them at board meetings like we always have been, invite them to maybe some in-person stuff that you might be doing. If your target audience for participation is residents who have school-aged children, logic is that childcare has to be arranged, et cetera. I mean, the, the board just did do a straw vote to go back to in-person meetings. It, not for nothing, I attended every meeting for years and can attest that many elected officials, whether it's on township committee or, or the board didn't even do that before they were seated. So many times for years, it was myself and a township committee member, most recently and consistently, I think it was Mr. Templeton. I fear, have a huge fear that this straw vote and, and possibly you know, what the board is going to act on, um, I fear that that former empty room is gonna become the unfortunate norm again, unless the board acts and acts decisively. So should going back to in-person meetings be the way that you guys are going to go, I implore the board, please invest in technology to allow the public to actively participate from home, not just submit a response on a form or watch a video on YouTube. Not for nothing, we're, we're having so many people actively participate in these meetings. And yes, yeah, sometimes it might just be the same old people. But if you really want to get that target audience engaged, you're going to have to find a way to do it in a dare I say, a hybrid model if you're going back in person. And that, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. I appreciate your comment. Mrs. Foley? 
Hi, everyone. Thank you for um, letting me speak. Um, we live at 14 um, Time and Circle. And um, I apologize. I think this was on the agenda. I must have missed it or um, I overlooked it. But um, I guess I should have said it in the beginning, but that's past us. Um, I just want to comment on Mr. Conti um, leaving. Um, such a great um, individual, as we all know. Um, as you're probably, some of you are aware, I am a little bit of a crazy parent. And he always, always, always responded weekend, night, anytime to me, often following up with a phone call, um, asking me if I wanted to discuss something um, on the phone, just incredible person. He was always so honest, professional, and just genuine and deep down a real person. Um, a few times I got to drop my daughter off at school, always outside greeting people, direct in traffic, no matter what the weather was. Um, but, but the most important part um, that really strikes me from Mr. Conti is often at um, dinner, we would always talk about our favorite part of the day. And Lacey would always um, bring up when Mr. Conti came into the classroom or he joined the Zoom meeting. And that was the favorite part of her day. So um, I'm sad that he's leaving simply because I think he's, a, don't think I know he's amazing, um, but we love him so much that we wish him well at whatever um, comes down, um, wherever he goes, we just wish him well. Um, just a quick comment on the um, board going back in person or Zoom. Um, when it was in person, my husband and I took turns going. Um, it, this is definitely more convenient, as I think, as um, one of the board members mentioned, it's a lot easier to sit on your couch. I was putting my kids to bed earlier when you all were speaking. It's convenient, but we um, value education, so we will be wherever you are. And I am also a teacher myself, so I get both ends of it. And I think, as um, Eric just spoke, you know, um, maybe we can get creative and um, get all involved. You know, as a teacher, we don't use Zoom, we um, use Google Classroom, but I've learned so much that because of the pandemic that I plan on continuing to use just because it, you know, it works so well. So maybe not scrapping the idea completely, um, maybe figuring out what it takes to um, get all involved would be a great thing. Just as a teacher, we're going back into person in September, full days and everything. But there's definitely um, a platform that I can still help um, meet the students' needs um, just more effectively. So thank you for letting me speak. And again, um, to all the other um, teachers who are retiring or moving on, good luck to you. And one last thing is I um, am so excited that those teachers have a contract because they deserve it. And to the members of the board, thank you for what um, you do in serving and volunteering. I appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. We appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Bartlett. Thanks, Marissa. I'll just keep it short and sweet. Um, I echo everything that Ms. Foley just said. I, I just, you know, shocked to hear of uh, Lou leaving tonight, and I just want to thank you for everything you have done uh, for you know all the kids, especially my kid. Over the last couple of years, you're the heart of Pearson School, and it's you'll be a tough shoes to fill. So, uh, thank you for everything you've done, Lou. Thank you. We appreciate your comment. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would um, like to comment at this time? If not, I will close the public comment on non-agenda items now. And we will be needing to go into executive session to discuss the CSA evaluation for 2020-2021. So I need a motion to go into the executive session, please. Motion. Second. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the motion and the second. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Bob. And before we do a full vote, I would like to say that we are going to be in executive session for approximately mm, one let's, hour. Let's it, that would be ideal, but I can't imagine. But um, so let's say about an hour and a half because that seems about right. I know. And if we can beat that, then we're winning. So um, about an hour and a half. And, and not <laughs> only that, Marissa, when you come out, there is no plan to approve anything. There's no plan to, to for a motion to be put on the the tape on the floor and, and have people vote on anything. The CSA evaluation is not an item that gets voted on as much as it gets discussed by the board and discussed with me after, you know, so it's, um, if the public is expecting something to be voted on immediately afterwards, that's not the process. That's correct. As soon as we come back, we're going to adjourn the meeting and then log out. I've heard, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry, can I ask a quick, quick question? It's related. Mm -hmm. um, the we didn't have the um, the state testing this year again, and state test results are usually made they are made public on district websites. 
Um, are we publishing benchmark data on our district website in place of the state testing data or no? We have not done that. Um, I've shared it with the board. I've shared it with the staff. Uh, if it's the will of the board to do that, I will certainly do that. We do have a state report card or performance report that we're required to post. But as you said, Ms. Darmo, we have no test score data that's official from the state standardized test. So um, if, the if the board sees fit for me to include that data on our website, then I can certainly do that. Do we want to vote on that or discuss that during the executive? I would say since it's part of my evaluation, I mean, it could make sense to discuss it during executive and um, have the board decide how, how I would proceed with it after that. I agree. We can make that as part of our discussion. Okay, so that's fine. And also, um, Joe will not be present for this aspect. Yeah. Did you want to discuss I'll, that? I'll be there for the first couple minutes just to set up the yes. meeting. And then, Marissa, you're going to become the host at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, that sounds good. Okay, so I need um, a vote. So all in favor to go into an executive session to discuss the CSA evaluation for 2020-2021. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, we're going into executive session now. Please leave this and move on to the next executive session link. Please. Okay, Harry's taking too long. Oh, okay. Okay, no. We're going to do a... Um, I don't let the dogs in. <laughs> fine. Oh, my God. They were outside for so long. Um, I'd like a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Thank you, Bob. Second? A second, Steve. Thank you, Stephen. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, everyone. It was a pleasure. Have a good night. Night. Night.